Hey, 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 what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Master Drum Whiskey Room on this Whiskey Wednesday night. And uh, what a night it's going to be. Uh, thanks for chiming in, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, if you don't know me by now, I'm Jason C., your host. And tonight, we have a pretty fun night lined up. Uh, we, I was just to, so just to kind of recap everybody, I was just over on Hello Again Whiskey Friends with uh, Jeff, Durrell, and Kelsey. And if you guys saw in the thumbnail, basically we all had to make our personal blends of these four bottles right here. So Ebony Williams 1783, Old Forester Rye, Knob Creek 9-year, small batch, not the single barrel, and just regular old Jack Daniels old number 7. Uh, basically, we kind of worked on it previously on uh, the last hour to see which, uh, which blend we kind of liked best personally. And now what we get to do is kind of personally go through each and every single blend and uh, see which uh, see who blended it better. So we'll kind of go through all that tonight. We'll welcome those guys onto the show here in a little bit. Uh, we'll also go through some news, some new labels, as we always do, and uh, should be a should be a really fun night. Also, going to have a little bit of a fundraiser for our uh, for our buddy Cheech from Whiskey Encore, who was recently in a car accident. Um, he's a fellow drummer like I am, and he hurt his hands and his feet, and is uh, he can't really play right now. So uh, kind of help him with his medical bills. Going to be raising a little bit of money there. There's a link down in the uh, description of the video for his personal GoFundMe. Uh, we'll be giving away some flights, a few bottles. So anybody that's uh, that's willing to donate will be uh, all ready to go for that. We'll give away some stuff later, um, just to kind of help Cheech out uh, a little bit, since uh, you know he's one of our favorite guys um on a whiskey tube so welcome in let's say hi to a bunch of people here in the chat we have josh fritz is here what's going on josh uh let's see slapshot is here what's going on slapshot nice to see you stephen waltz in the house we have warren smith is here nathan Cravonis. what is going on have a good wednesday uh mr jiggs is here what's going on bro ohio a broads in the house Let's see here. Tim Cornet is here. Dr. Sped, I think, is here as well. What whiskey goes well with nerds? <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Uh, James Lay is here. What's going on, James? Uh, he says, let's freaking go. Love it. Uh, let's see. We have Roger Reese is here. 96 Milliman. What is going on, buddy? Uh, Travis Robeson is in the house. What is going on, man? I see Russ L. Uh, Michael Speakerman is here as well. What's going on, Mike? Uh, MJ is here. What is going on, MJ? Look at Lily. Always nice to see her mug. Uh, Fancy Franchi is in the house. Come on, cousin, at the matching drum. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens tonight. Jeff Perkins is here. Uh, what is going on? T. Jarrett, I see. Dave Markowski. Uh, let's see. Dunny, what is going on? Joe the Sample Guy is here. Uh, ben Dramon in the house. What's going on, Ben? Nice to see you as always. Uh, we have Patrick Relak. Uh, cheers all. Glad to be part of the chat amongst friends. Absolutely. Roscoe P. Coltrane is here. We have Truman. We have, uh, I think, someone from Korea, if, uh, if I'm mistaken. If I'm not mistaken. Thanks for chiming in. Uh, John T. is here. Let's see. Whiskey Juice in the house. What is going on? Michael McDonald. Uh, he says, stop in and say cheers, mate, and have a great live. I need Z's. What a Tuesday, though. Uh, that is Michael McDonald, the musical artist, I'm assuming. Maybe not. Uh, let's see. Mr. Mom 310 is here. Mr. Mushnick is here. Giselle's bourbon. Uh, Giselle says, quote the guys from Hello Again. One of us has to win. We can't let this guy beat us two years in a row on our own channel. <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens. Okay. Let me scroll down to catch up here. Uh, killing these lives lately, says Jeremy Arard. Thanks, man. I, I couldn't be more happy with the feedback I got from the, from the great interview with uh, Connor O'Driscoll last week. That was that was a hell of a live stream, um, a hell of an interview. I mean, I only asked the questions, but he was the one that made that so special. He was so cool, so laid back. I got so many great comments on that, and um, you know, every every interview I feel like I do with the master stiller or, or a guest that comes on the show, I feel like is pretty special. But Connor's was was I feel like it was just extra special because. I don't know. For someone that manages so many brands under the Heaven Hill umbrella, he was just so transparent with us. He answered every question, tough ones, easy ones, uh, took some special requests. <laughs> Maybe the mellow corn thing will happen, guys. I don't know. But we were 
we were really, really, uh, I, I was so just, I was on cloud nine after that interview. Um, and, and that kind of continue on, continued on to the next day. So we definitely have some more uh, distillers lined up here to talk to about some upcoming brands um, and also uh, some other people uh, that I have in mind. So we'll see how that goes down the line. But uh, tonight, again, let me let me throw uh, the let me throw Cheech's GoFundMe here in the uh, let me let me pin this in the chat before I forget. So in case anybody wants to help Cheech out, you're, you can do that. We're not really doing super chats. You could do a super chat tonight if you want, guys. But really, we're going to kind of direct everyone to the GoFundMe to help them out because they take less than um, uh, they take less than Google does uh, for you know for the live streams. So let me throw this in the chat here. There we go. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to pin this when I can. There we go. All right. So that is pinned in the chat. So you guys can check that out. Perfect. So, yeah, if you want to donate tonight, please do. Uh, we have the uh, the Turks, I think, are monitoring all that. So uh, let's see. Oh, we already have one person from the from, from Hello Again Whiskey Friends kind of hanging out in the back. Uh, good evening, Jason. The peerless tasting makes me want them all, says G CJP Bourbon. Yeah, absolutely. I think the the uh, the the peerless bottles, all three of them, they're all super unique, really, really good. Uh, these, again, guys, for those of you that don't know, we did three barrel picks of peerless almost two years ago, and they kind of were in limbo for over a year and a half, and then we finally just got them. So, and then, you know, we got to taste them for the first time after a year and a half, and it was really, really cool. Tim Doherty, what did I miss? What happened to Cheech? Cheech was in a car accident, unfortunately. He hurt his hands, uh, and he, you know, he plays drums like I do. Uh, so we want to help him get better with some, uh, you know, with some of his medical bills. So, uh, so yeah. Um, let's see here. What's being given away tonight? Giselle's Boston. Uh, I think we have a bunch of flights that we're giving away. Uh, I'm actually going to give away one of our new Peerless uh, rye barrels that we just got in. Maybe a couple of other things. Um, we'll see, but we, we have some really cool stuff in the pipeline for tonight. So, uh, let's see here. What else has been going on? Uh, this bottle right here, the heaven Hill 18, I got a lot of crazy feedback on that review. And, um, I think it was like one of those things where people were surprised that I wasn't as impressed with it as I thought I would be since I love the 17 years so much. But, you know, for me, it just was one of those whiskeys that, I don't know. It just it it's a it's a polarizing whiskey because is it good? Yeah, it's 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 good, but for three hundred dollars, it lacks the the punch of flavor that I'm looking for, especially when I'm spending three hundred bucks on a bottle of bourbon. And that's not even my bourbon. That that's actually Fred Minix. Um, and Fred is like, can you please send that back with a little bit of whiskey in it? We'll see how that goes. Um, I might just take one more sample just to keep for myself, so I can maybe revisit it. Uh, revisited it, revisit it, <laughs> and then uh, and then you know get to try it maybe down the line. Uh, but we're also going to talk about some new bottles, some new some news that uh, in the whiskey uh, in the whiskey game right now. And um, yeah, we'll go through all of it tonight as we're trying out our blends that we all created, and we'll see who blended all four better. And we're also we're also um, suggesting anybody watching if you have these four bottles. To maybe join in on us and uh, join in with us and blend these blends together and uh, see how they taste to you. Do they suck? Are they good? I feel like these are four pretty attainable bourbons. Uh, well, actually, there's one rye and one Tennessee whiskey, two bourbons technically. So if you guys uh, have these at home, you know, maybe uh, try to make this uh, work with us. Uh, let's see. We have Mr. Mom. Oh, there's Cheech. Cheech is here, folks. Thank you, everyone, for the support. It really means a lot to me. Dude, we got to help the fellow drummer, man. Absolutely. Uh, top Dog with a super chat. PayPal is not working on my phone today for the GoFundMe, so please add this. Top Dog will do, man. Thank you so much. Uh, Whiskey Juice says, hey, Jason, when can we expect a sampling of the new Peerless Toasted Barrel Bourbon? Uh, I actually tried that two weeks ago. Three weeks ago? Yeah, because I skipped a week. Go back to my... The, the live stream I did before Connor O'Driscoll, I tried the new Peerless Toasted Bourbon, 
And for someone that doesn't or isn't crazy about toasted bourbons, that's one of my favorite. Uh, that was one of my favorites. So I thought it was really, really good. Um, are you going to talk about your last video, Matt Griffith? I could address that, I guess. Um, so I recently posted a video today about a uh, about the Bourbon Heads, which was a a group that you have to buy into with an NFT for twenty five hundred bucks. You get access to their Bourbon collection. Um, it's it accrues value over time, whatever it may be. And essentially, I put this video up as a way to like educate like bourbon drinkers on some of these offerings that are out there and what NFTs are and how it affects bourbon and different clubs. And I got nothing but complete like hatred over it. And I had to take the video down, uh, unfortunately. Now I may put it back up and just turn the comments off uh, because I feel like people judge the video before they even watched it, unfortunately. Um, First and foremost, this isn't it wasn't a video of me like endorsing them by any means. Uh, I you know, I think they're really good guys. If you saw the first part of the video with Dwayne Poor, um, he's part of it and he's a great person. He shares all this amazing bottles. But I think people hear NFT and they hear uh, I don't know, cryptocurrency and they automatically think it's a scam. Um, now you can think what you want. I don't think the guys are doing anything, you know, underhanded. I think they truly just trying to build something unique, but I I kind of expected it was going to come with some some blowback on me a little bit, but I just didn't expect it to be that much. I mean, I, I literally let that stuff roll off of my back, but there were some really hateful comments that I got, and it was disappointing, uh, to be honest, because I'm just not used to that, and I'm just like trying to put out content for you guys to, you know, learn from, and apparently. Most people did not take it that way, so um, that was the that was kind of the, uh, the the whole the whole like thing from it. And listen, you could kind of take what you want from the video if you felt like you learned from it. If you think it's a it's a scam, or you think there's something else weird going on with it, I mean that's completely up to you. But that was really the crux of the video is for you to kind of learn what these guys are doing because I think at the time when they launched it, it was something new and different. Uh, and, and honestly, I mean, it could change their whole business model. They could go from a, an NFT based uh, group to just, you know, a just kind of a, like a pay for, you know, just like a straight up fee to join the group instead, because people seem to have such like vitriol against NFTs. Because um, I don't know, I mean, we had a video with Bourbon Lore, and I think I think their club charges thousands of dollars too to be in that one, with all the experiences they do. But I don't know. There's a lot of interesting things that are out there, and I think it was a video I just wanted to do just to kind of highlight that. And I mean, everyone was like, "Oh, you're you're selling, you're trying to sell this stuff." You know, it wasn't me selling it. I was just trying to be informative, and apparently, a lot of people did not take it that way. So I had to take the video down just for the sake of uh, all the the nasty stuff I was getting, unfortunately. Um, uh, so yeah, it was it was tough. It was it was definitely tough. I think you've been misrepresenting yourself here a bit by having Dwayne on to get clicks and viewers, and them offering your viewers a discount. You were promoting it. I don't think you were nefarious um, to get clicks and views, and then off then offering your viewers a discount. You were promoting it. So, so that's the thing, Alan, at the end of the video, they kind of offered like something to throw in for any master and drum viewers that join. And they didn't tell me about that until the very end. Like I literally didn't know about it. So, um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. It's, uh, it just sucks. Uh, I felt bad cause these guys were looking forward to the video coming out for a long time and it just, uh, yeah, it's just a lot of, a lot of bad stuff. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Quid pro quo. Yeah. I mean, Alan, I didn't really get anything out of it. I got to, I got to try, um, I got to try some really great whiskey in Dwayne's collection. Um, but I mean, they, they paid for me to fly out there. They paid for me. They took me out to dinner. It was, it was a nice time. The guys are great. So, but everyone seems to want to put a negative spin on it and it didn't, I really didn't assume it would come off that way, but it did. So uh, so yeah, let's see. Um, hateful comments kept me warm at night. 
It's ignorant yet educated. Dwayne Poor is a fascinating collection, always looking for info. Um, but you edited and uploaded it. Bruzel had pushback, as did Randy. Um, yeah, they did, Alan. But, I mean, again, I felt like I took a different approach. Um, and I don't know. I, I didn't watch their videos, Alan. So, But I just think the, 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 uh, the hateful comments I got was a little bit unwarranted. And I think people didn't even watch the video to hear the conversation as soon as they watched as soon as they saw it come up they would just write in comments and i thought that was a little bit of bullshit because they didn't see like they didn't actually watch the conversation we had so there you go uh just joining and hearing the info on the bourbon heads video i'm sorry you got the backlash from the video please don't post videos that allow your fans to get whiskey discounts says wade ward but what, what discounts was there? There was no discount. What was the discount? That if you join, you get a flight of whiskey? There wasn't a discount for it. What was the discount? Uh, yeah, first world problems. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, it happens. It, it happens, guys. It's, you know, you can't, you can't dwell on it. You know, I just, I took the video down because people had some strong feelings about the group. So, so that's that. Um, all right, let's see. Let's talk about the bourbon. You are not hunt hunting anymore. I thought it was good. Oh, that bur Oh, that video, Matt Griffith. Um, that video, I love that video. So we'll talk about that video a little bit with the guys once, uh, once they get on here. Um, I was talking about the bourbon hunting. I thought it was good. Yeah, absolutely. Jason, I'll listen to these clowns. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, Lance said, I, for one, loved it and probably, and we'll probably join. Thanks. I know others in, they love it. Um, yeah, we'll just, I mean, we'll just keep going. It is what it is. So uh, with that, let's bring on our first guest from Hello Again, Whiskey Friends. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Mr. Kelsey Dime. What's up, everybody? Cheers, Jay. Good What's going here. on, bro? Not much, bro. Uh, we were very similar on our proportions. I know that. Were, were we really again? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was, it was like point two points away on one and everything else was almost identical. So, yeah, I, I, you know, honestly, I think what happens is that, um, there are certain, yeah, when I tried them again, like for the first time, well, not for the first time, but when I tried them on their own, there was just certain attributes that you want to kind of highlight and think that one whiskey could bring to another. Mm -hmm. So that's really what I was going for. So, I mean, I totally was using the Nancy Fraley pyramid. So I, I uh, was right there with you. I just didn't want to say it and give Jeff any uh, ideas yeah. about what I was doing. So uh, let's see here. Um, Let's see. Seriously, people can make up their own minds. Why hate? If you don't agree, just don't participate. Is it that's it? Yeah, I mean, but yeah, people don't see it that way sometimes. They see me sitting next to some people and then automatically assume that like I'm, you know, I'm trying to sell you on this stuff. And it's really just like an informative video because they, you know, they told me about it and I got to meet Dwayne and whatever. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. It is what it is. But I do want to talk about um, the video that I made about uh, top whiskeys and bourbons I'm not hunting anymore. There's a lot of, I got a lot of feedback on that video. And surprisingly, the number one whiskey, the number one bourbon on that list that was defended was 1792 foolproof. Interesting. That was the one, that was the one video. I'm sorry, the one bottle in that video that people in the comments were defending. I would say other bottles that were up there were, um, uh, what else was up there? Uh, I think Will It Rye. Apparently a lot of people love Will It Rye. <laughs> that, was, that was a very big defended bottle as well. Um, but yeah, I was surprised. And I think my choice of, of 1792 foolproof didn't really have anything to do, again, it wasn't anything that I thought the quality came down. It had to do with me thinking that I haven't had a really good 1792 proof, foolproof either standard bottle or a pick in a long time. And a lot of people in the comments were saying stuff like, oh, they come around here all the time. I just got a really, really good one. 
And I'm like, dude, like I haven't seen one in so long. Mm -hmm. And it's like when I do see them and I do pull the trigger on it, I'm usually disappointed. But other people were saying like, dude, I got a 1792 foolproof that could go up against like a stack junior. It was that good. And it's only like 50 bucks. So I'm like, well, show me where that 1792 foolproof is because I can't find them. Yeah. So I think it yeah. all depends on who picks it too. And that's the part of the issue that I have with that. It's like, <laughs> I mean, you have people that can actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're always chasing the dickle. Uh, but you have people that really, you know, I, I have one from some friends in Oregon that picked it and it was really good when I opened it and then it got even better with air. So I yeah, 17, 1792 is across the board still relatively budget friendly. Plus it's a label that has been around before the boom. Um, Adam says the 1792 foolproofs I've had have been meh. Okay. So, yeah, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other bottles uh, that was in that list that got defended. Obviously, Weller Foolproof and Rock Hill Farms. I think the best comment I got was like, like, Jason, you went too far. You know that if you saw those for retail in the store, you'd be buying it. And I was like, Rock Hill Farms, honestly, I probably wouldn't buy again. Weller Foolproof, if it's a pick and it's retail, I know the pick is good. Yeah, maybe. But it's it's not a bottle that I am you know, continuously seeking out anymore. And it's not like an automatic buy for me anymore because I think there are too many good available weeded bourbons that cast strength these days. So ben holiday. Ben holiday, Larceny Barrel Proof. Um, you can get into what Middle West is doing. I mean, yeah. there's really good weeded bourbons out there that I don't feel like when Weller Foolproof came out, that was like the beacon of like, oh my God. We got to get because there was the only player in the game was Maker's Mark Cast Strength, and nobody wanted that. So, yeah. you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, let's, uh, I'll buy the Rock. Yeah, I think Rock Hill Farms, I would buy to trade, but I wouldn't buy for the um, like to have and enjoy anymore. Everybody was saying Rock Hill Farms, really, says James Lay. Uh, the ones screaming at that are the ones who still think Blanton's is a premium <laughs> bottle. <laughs> I love all the little horsey. Uh, yeah. So shots for the eclipse. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Chris. Yeah. Chris Nelson. I happen to enjoy Maker's Mark cast strength. I don't think it's a bad. I actually prefer the 46 cast strength to me rather than the standard. But I don't think the Maker's Mark cast ring is a bad bottle, but at the time, it was the only player in the game. Let's bring on Mr. Smiley, Macho Man Randy Savage himself. It is Jeffrey Wack. <laughs> What's up, Wack Attack? Hello, everybody. It's been far too yeah. long since I've seen you two. Uh, oh, how can I forget this one, this gem, Rebel 10. Great weed yes. bourbon. It's essentially yeah. old fits. It's essentially old fits. Uh, and go watch, uh, go watch Darrell's video. He just posted that yeah. actual comparison today. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, everyone agreed with Mid Midwinter's Night Strand. I was like, I'm not buying that shit again. Yeah. Uh, and then I think one of the other ones that was kind of funny was the uh, um, Blood Oath ended up being a little bit more polarizing than I thought it would be. Yeah. Um, I'm on your side with that one. Yeah. I agreed with all yours too, but I was on the fence with 1792. I'll back up the people that were defending yeah, 1792. I've had I some think, good picks. I think 1792 is the is the caveat in the, in that video. Let me bring in uh, number four here, number six. I should say. What's up, number <laughs> six? <laughs> Ride or die for Team Six. What's up, fellas? Um, Harvest Bourbon Bash for the fall event name. Oh, that's pretty cool, Giselles. I like that. Um, Rebel 10 is fantastic. Yeah, so so everyone was like, how come you didn't put Blanton's or Blue Run or any of those on there that I always talk about? I'm like, well, because I always talk about them. You guys know I'm not buying that. So, um, so yeah. Uh, let's see. What else? Um, this guy. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Look at him. Literally in my chair behind me. I'm like, yeah, he's literally, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Uh, do you think uh, do you think bottles that have a difficult time maintaining a standard of identity are natural picks for that video? Midwinch is nice. Strand batches, McKenna, Magnus cigar blends. Um, I that's actually a really good way to put it. I think for sure. Uh, let's see. 
maintaining a standard identity or not having enough variance batch to batch to then warrant wanting more of it. I've been yeah. <laughs> I've been debating similarly with the two uh, XO. I've got three open two XOs right now, and I'm like, ah, the fourth one just came out. Do I need another one? Well, you guys know I'm buying that. I'm buying like a case of that sneakerhead one. I uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> I said a picture to Jason. I was like, dude, did you talk to him about this? Because this is totally new. <laughs> Dude, I got so many messages that day when that when that label dropped on uh, the TTB. Everyone and people were writing the comments. Smash and drums gonna be all over this bottle. <laughs> I, was, I was getting tagged, and then and then uh, I messaged I messaged Dixon. I'm like, Dixon, did you make this just for me? I love you, man. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Uh, but you know, with you guys tonight, we'll definitely go through some new stories because I always like to go through that, get your reactions. As we're uh, creating these uh, these blends to kind of go head to head, I didn't get to see the other proportion, so I'm kind of looking forward to it. I I sent you a link, Jason, and uh, Richie Z's hunting down the link for me too. I'll see if uh, he's going to post it in chat here. The link for what? The I sent a uh, Google sheet with all the proportions. Um, oh, okay, it's in your text message. If you can copy it in the description of the video, I guess that'd probably be easiest too. Um, so you sent it to my email? Or uh, wait, I can wait. send it to your email. Yeah, uh, I'll send it to your email real quick. I'll reply yes. to that email. Yeah, perfect. Send it to the email. This way we can share that with everybody. Perfect. Richie's got it if you want to put it up. Richie Z's got it on the chat. Oh, you know what? I, I actually I got it off of uh, I got it off of uh, Patreon. I'm looking at it right now. Ah, perfect. All right, so let me let me drop this in the uh, in the chat here. Yeah, I shrunk mine down to like one ounce pours, maybe one and a half instead of two. <laughs> I just literally doubled whatever forty milliliters is. I doubled what yeah. everybody's um, proportions were and just poured those into these glens they are random now but i'll randomize them again like i labeled each each with a sticker of whoever's name it is under it then i'll mix them around and when we get to blinding i'll do it that actually, way yeah i can but, i can I, I can actually do this too um give me one second i'll excuse me. I'll, I'll i'll drop this right in the um i'll i'll just take an image of it here and I'll throw this right in StreamYard, and then everybody can get like a good look at it without having to uh, go to the spreadsheet. So give me one second here. Um, so proportions-wise, right, let me take a look at this. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta see. I gotta see what happened here. All right, guys. So again, as I mentioned on the uh, on the the stream before, over on Hello Again Whiskey Friends, we all worked out our blends that we wanted to mess with. And we came, each of us came up with these uh, specific proportions. So here they are. Let's let's take a look at these. Oh, there it is. So Jason, uh, let's see. These are the ratios. So these are all in milliliters, correct, guys? Yes. So yes. there are three columns. So there's out of the 20 milliliters, that's what we blended. And then I did the math to multiply it into a two ounce pour. But oh. if you want to do okay. whatever you want there um, in terms of how much volume you need for the blind, you know? Okay. All right. Well, that makes it easy. So these are the, so these are the, uh, the blends, guys. If anybody watching wants to try these along with us, go ahead and take a quick photo with your phone or whatever you want to do and maybe uh, try, to, try to make these with us. So this is what we're going to do here. Um, could either... So the leftmost column under each name, that's those are the milliliters pour for to add up to 20. If you want to go to the two ounce pour, that's the middle, that's the middle column, and then your ratios there are the last column. So there you go. All right, I'm gonna turn this off. If everyone needs me to put it back up, let me know in the chat. And there we go. Um, Raging Irishman says, uh, damn it, this is requiring chemistry measuring in milliliters. <laughs> Uh, Smoke Steve says, uh, "Why blend? Uh, why not? <laughs> Keep it interesting because you try to make something uh, bigger or better than you know just its its parts." Yeah. So that was a struggle with these. All right, I so we're gonna. So basically, we need to recreate. I need to recreate everyone else's blends, right? That's what we're doing. 
Correct. Yeah, that's what we're doing. I'm working on yours right now. All right. Yeah, I did that in the back half, so I'm good when you guys are. <clears throat> All right, where is my blend here? Oh, there it is. Okay, I might need I might need to make a little bit more of my blend. Um, while everyone is working on their blends, guys, let's go through a couple of news stories here um, that I want to talk about. Uh, first and foremost, just to kind of keep you guys informed, um, it looks like we're going to get a new Ezra Brooks real soon, guys. Port. Ezra Brooks has just dropped their uh, port finished bourbon. So on Tuesday, uh, Luxro announced the release of their latest whiskey from its Ezra, Book, uh, Ezra Brooks brand, 99. The Ezra Brooks 99 Port Wine Cask Finish joins the brand's special cask finish series and will begin shipping to retail shelves later in April. Uh, distilled from a mash bill of 78 corn, 10% rye, 12% malted barley. Uh, that is the Heaven Hill mash bill. Yeah, so sure still, is. <laughs> still sourcing. Uh, Ezra Brooks 99 Port, War, uh, Port Wine Cask Finish is finished for six months in port cask and bottle at 99 proof with a low, low price of $34.99. Holy crap. Which, dude, that Man. is, yeah, I'm I'm all about it. 35 bucks for that? Come on. Yeah, that seems like a steal. Heaven Hill finished in port? Come on. Yeah. At basically 100 proof? That's pretty good, right? Yeah, 35 bucks. Even if it is like a two or three year, I don't think it's going to be bad. Like Ezra Brooks, on a, as it stands right now, is pretty decent. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see here okay wow let him do a single barrel of that Ooh. of what the the ezra, the ezra? Sport? yeah oh yeah that'd be pretty cool i think like that they're launching that now you know what i mean maybe in the next two years they may have finished offerings for those ezra single maybe barrel. you never know uh let's go to another new story here and this has to do with uh I was waiting for this to happen for a whiskey brand to cash in on the Eclipse. Oh, uh, the, Mir the Mirador Eclipse, Texas single malt from Balcones. Um, so they just unveiled this for the uh, obviously for the 2024 solar eclipse. So this is a single malt. Um, they use two strains of yeast, a red wine and a rosé yeast, alongside its house malt whiskey yeast. They claim this combination of yeast has unlocked a symphony of soft blush red berry and fruits uh, notes uh, rarely seen in single malts. Uh, Balcona's Mirador Eclipse American Single Malt was aged between four and five years in a mix of first, second, and third fill ex-Kentucky bourbon casks before being bottled at 110 proof. Suggested retail price of a hundred bucks and will be made available beginning in May at select retailers in Texas, California, Illinois, Colorado, New York, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, South Carolina, Wisconsin, Missouri, New Jersey, Louisiana, Maryland, Oklahoma, Oregon, Minnesota, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. So Sheesh. there you go. Anybody anybody interested in that one? Yes, no, nope. maybe so. Nope. I'll take the Ezra. Did I just get a hard no from uh from from Jarrell? No. Okay. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. rosé and what is it? Port and rosé yeast or what? Well, that's the that's the yeast. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I'm not what's a big your, Balcones fan. What's your? I got like one, one bottle that's actually pretty fantastic, but outside of that, like, haven't really had any that I would gravitate towards. All right. <clears throat> but yeah, it's interesting. This is gonna this is gonna take too long to do this. I'm just pulling this shit in. <laughs> That's there easy right, when you have the markers there. Yeah. yeah. Well no, see, That's Jason, funny. if you just had a better mixing device like this Tylenol cap. <laughs> yeah, <you'd... laughs> you're, you're probably you're probably right. <laughs> Kai. Getting attacked over here by this guy. We also, Jason, while while you uh, left, somebody yeah. said whoever's in fourth place has to chug the JD seven. So. Give me. Oh God. <laughs> shot. Shot a JD seven for last place. Haven't yeah. did that since I was like twenty one. <laughs> no shot. It's a chug. It's going to be I'll more than a shot. No, I'll do God, it. No. I'll do it, but you guys will be waiting at the airport a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. All right. So that one's 
Yeah. Make sure those measurements are correct. Measurements. Yeah. I, might, I, might, I might have to redo this one. I don't remember what the hell I put in it. <laughs> I know the level of concentration it takes to talk yeah, and awesome. blend. It's it's crazy. See, yeah, I did it before uh, I jumped on. <laughs> yeah, Made you, guys are, you guys are killing me with this shit. Uh, yeah, you right. got the crappy little pen thingies too. Like they suck. <laughs> Like you'll try to squeeze it to oh, get man, two perfect, milliliters. Perfect. It's like a good like two and a half off all the time. Perfect pour right there. Jeff, yours is different, buddy. I'm interested to see how yours tastes. His was what a little. I think I'm like yeah, the furthest yeah. though. Like mine is probably the most different from everybody in a sense. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Kelsey's and Jason's negate each other because they're so similar and let the unique parts of Darrell's and I stick out. Oh, look now, at you guys trying to play the unique card again. I'm sticking out for sure. Telling you that. I don't know if it's going to be in a good way or a bad way. Interesting. That's his uh, Kelsey and that. Jason are so similar that it's just, ours are just going to stand out amazingly. Okay. <laughs> amazing. Hi. Oh, shit. There went my beaker. Oh, see? See, if that was a plastic Tylenol cup, it wouldn't have broken either. It didn't break. Thank you. It just shattered. All right. Nailed that. And then last but not least, the Evan Williams. Okay. I got I got Darrell's blend done here. Ooh. It's the best one. Okay. Yep. Even Kai thinks so. <laughs> well, now, that's, your, yeah, that's, your, that's your son, so I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> At the end of this, we'll rank them all, but you don't get points for wherever you rank yours. It's really a matter of where you rank the other three. Yeah. But yours is in. Now, the key is to rank all the other ones really low. That's the key. <laughs> I on it like last time I did this, I thought I knew what mine was, and I thought I blinded and I didn't know. So I'm not right, gonna know. This is, uh, so this is okay. Let me put it in order of the spreadsheet. So, yeah, that's what I had to do too. Yeah, this one's mine. So we that's should mine. tag him though, because we're gonna do it blind, Jay. That's Durrell. No, I'll we're not. Him. I gotta yeah. put dots. On. I'll put dots. You gotta on blind them. them. Oh yeah, I'm put. I'm putting dots on mine. I'm gonna. Yeah, blind you gotta blind them. them. That's right. what we did last Jeez. time. Put a little yeah, sticker on them, bro. Stop Durrell, it. Kelsey. Yeah. See. Jason yeah. and um. And Mr. Jeff. Oh. Can't have any bias here knowing what's in the glass. I actually have to rinse out and make sure I had non-etched glens so I didn't know what was what. <laughs> 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 I have so many like like channel glens. I was like, oh, it was a struggle finding like the, the blank one. <laughs> I'm getting in the same boat, Darrell. I've got so many branded ones and all the clear ones I feel like have broken over time. Mm. Yeah. All right, guys, let's real quick. Let's jump into the next news story. And speaking of 2XO, uh, the next one has been revealed by Mr. Dixon Deadman. And it looks like this one is uh, it's inspired by his favorite vacation place uh, or favorite place to go on vacation. Um, and let's see here. That's the shoe store. <laughs> that's my favorite. That's my favorite place to go on vacation. So this is the Kawhi blend, the fourth release in the 2XO Whiskey Icon series. The Kawhi blend is a nod to whiskey blenders and 2XO whiskey founder Dixon Deadman's happy place, Kawhi Island, according to the brand. It's located about 25 miles south of Charleston, South Carolina, or Kiowa, Kiowa Island, not Kawhi, Kiowa Island, K. I-A-W-H-A. -A. Kiowa Island is a special place for me, Deadman said in a news release. It's where my family has been vacationing since I was a kid, where my, wi my wife and I have been taking our children. It's my happy place where I can get away with family and friends and step off the grid. Follow that 52% ABV. Uh, the Kiowa blend has a suggested retail price of $99.99. 60% of the blend is composed of the high rye bourbon, which is finished for 9 to 12 months, and new charred oak barrels with number three and number four char levels. So there you go. Yep. Nice. I don't know. Like, like here's the thing with Dixon's 2XO line. 
I know there's been releases that have been like, you know, underwhelming. There have others been in the mix that people really like. Like the Gem of Kentucky had such a broad spectrum of like blends that were okay and then blends that were really good. It really just depended on which blend you got. Um, but you always like wonder if you skip one, like is that going to be the one that's like an absolute hitter that he makes? Right. You know what I mean? It's it's like that fear because Dixon has a pedigree that, I mean, we know what he's capable of and you feel like if you skip one, what if that's the one that everybody goes crazy for and then by the time you go to look for it, it's all gone. I think that for me is kind of the weird thing with 2XL. Um, you guys in the comments, what, what do you guys think? Uh, let's see. Yeah. And his blends got better as they went along. The tribute blend was my favorite of the three last year. Yeah. How did y'all decide to blend these whiskeys? So Jeff, you want to tell everybody about the process here? Yeah. So what we do is we each draft a bottle of this. Uh, I chose the old Forester 100 rye. Uh, Kelsey chose the Knob Creek nine year. No, Jason. No. no. Okay. Then Evan Jason Williams chose the Knob Creek nine year. Yeah, there you go. LC chose the Evan Williams 1783. And Darrell hates the world and chose the Jack <laughs> Daniels number seven. <laughs> Got to keep these guys honest. Got to make it interesting, man. Nobody really drinks that. No, do they really like it? So the, the challenge is to <laughs> make sure you blend something with that that's actually enjoyable. You know, try to make it fun. I was real intrigued to do a boo rye. So that was the main reason that I pulled the old uh, the old Forester rye in. Kelsey, what was your motivation for the Evan Williams? I just wanted something that was solid that to me, even at a lower proof, has some viscosity and actually has some actual flavor to it. You know, I know Knob Creek 100 is a really good bottle by itself. But to me, at that proof point, there's something about that particular bottle for the viscosity and taste. So... I like that one the best. I don't like the Knob Creek and it was my first time having it like a week ago. I don't, I don't care for it. Like I'll never buy a bottle of it unless I'm doing something like this. Like the nine year single bar, like that reserve version, the 120 is good. I've had that, but this one's just honestly, okay for me. And you know, you would, people would have thought I probably would have had this already. Cause like I've been drinking for a few years, but literally it was my first time having it like a week ago. And I wasn't, I was just like, eh, about it. I'm sorry, yeah. which bottle are you talking about, Terrell? The Knob Creek 9. Oh, the Knob Creek 9. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think a lot of folks, like, you know, whiskey heads, they'll they'll reach for Knob Creek 120 before mm -hmm. anything else, a single barrel. So, <clears throat> uh, let's see. Terrell, Wait, couldn't you have told me that that was your least favorite before I made 60% of my blend, the Knob Creek Rye? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say it's my uh, least favorite. <laughs> But yeah, Kenneth was, Rathburn says two XOs all collect dust here. Um, ben Dramon says, I think I'm over two XO. Um, other than the proof, what was the difference between the previous 1783 label? I know where a handle of it still exists. Um, the American, probably? I no, no. Uh, for, for this one, it's, it's still, I, I think they went a little bit older as far as the base of the whiskey for 1783, the new one. Mm -hmm. um, besides the label change and besides upping the proof, I think from what I read, it's it's like seven to eight year stuff in that bottle. We're not we're not like talking about a super young whiskey. Well, the uh, the one on your left hand, Jeff, is actually a different label than than we're talking about too. So there was a previous label that was older than that that was a different blend and a different proof. So gotcha. Yeah, I haven't had that either. I do like the heroes though. I put them side by side, and there's a notable noticeable difference. Um, I gotta, so I gotta thank. Uh, is Jason the only one trying to make all four blends? No, everyone's has. A, have you guys made all four? Yeah, yeah. I did mine I before I hopped one. on the stream. <laughs> oh my god, guys! Sorry, like I'm trying to do both here. Sorry. No, no, you're good, good. Hey, buddy. Take your time. You got a few hours here. Yeah. We're well, an hour and change. Darrell's going to be staying up all night, so oh, yeah, that's true. He, yeah, that's true. He's not worried about it. The rest of us that actually have to sleep. <laughs> Darrell yeah. will be a walking zombie tomorrow. I can just no, tell you. No, no. I'll take a quick like power nap, and I'll be good to go. We just power need to get you to, to, to Darrell. 
we need to get you to like coffee. Yeah, that's going to be our goal this year. I'll try it. I'll try it. But that's okay. going to be the your your goal is to is to what get they Darrell to you. like coffee. Yeah, oh, good luck with that. Yeah. He <laughs> <hates coffee. laughs> yeah, the Turks are bringing some coffee, so I'm gonna you know give it a go. Oh, well, that's that's good, that's good coffee to uh, to get into. I mean that, yeah. You know why? Because how? Because the way the way uh, they roast it, it's actually it's not as bitter as some other coffees are. Mm -hmm. The roast gives it a nice sweetness, but not overly smoked either. I think that might be a good way to, to get you into it. Yeah, we shall see. And then I pack the detling, Darrell. That way, when you like the coffee in the morning, you can try the detling oh, at night. Gosh. <laughs> No, oh we need to God. get Darrell to get to try the Balconis Rye again so we can film him tasting that. No. Get that was video probably the most fun taste that I've ever yeah, seen. The video of you with the stinky diaper. We got Jeff's video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Gotta edit all those clips together someday. We don't. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny. <clears throat> so, one thing I think is interesting, it's kind of under the context of that 2XO, but I see it happening at other stores and other brands, but you mentioned the MSRP on the 2XO is $99.99. I've noticed Party Source actually has been dropping prices. So 2XO there is $89.99. The, uh, the gem is $179.99. And that's not the only brand that they're doing that to. There seems to be a, a lot of brands right now that got like a 10% discount. But I was surprised yeah. because that 2XO blend just came out, but they yeah. still did the whole skew. So regardless well, think, if it's the new one or if it's the tribute, it's $89.99. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that you are seeing more bourbons sit longer on the shelf that weren't before. And that's part of the issue, at least at my local. Like they're running out of space because they have bourbons that have been sitting and collecting dust Excuse me. where they didn't. For instance, I'll just throw this brand out there because I like it. And now it's kind of in our state. It was one of the first states to release, which is Smoke Wagon, you mm -hmm. know, I couldn't, it, they couldn't keep uncut unfiltered on the shelf. And now they're seven, eight deep on the shelf with dust on them because nobody's buying them. Like oh man, Phil Austin came out with a Ruby pour finished rye. Oh my God. Jeez. Is it cash? So, oh, so yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll be, um, we'll be at the, We'll be at Still Austin here at the end of April. Um, Scott and I are taking a trip to, we're going to Rebecca Creek to pick either a double oaked or a Spanish oak. Ooh, um, for group. Um, killer. Yeah, and then we're going to Still Austin the next day to grab either a bourbon, a rye, two bourbons. We're going to see if we can get two picks uh, from them. So we'll see what, how it goes. What's your take on them moving to Kentucky? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I kind of dig it, but I don't dig it. I feel like them being in Austin, like kind of makes them still Austin. I don't know. I, I, I get that they want to be close to call like, you know, where like 98% of the world's bourbon comes from. And I get that part of it. You kind of want to be in the part of the, the tourism that everybody gets to be a part of instead of like having to travel all the way to Texas. Um, but I don't know. I feel like the thing that makes still Austin special is the fact that they're from Texas and there are so many people that I know that still cannot get into Texas whiskeys, but they just have a way of doing it. That's so delicious compared to a lot of other Texas distilleries. So I feel like, you know, you're in Austin, your name is still Austin, freaking own it, play it up. But hmm. is it a full distillery They're They're moving over there. What are they doing? They didn't really give details. I just know that they're moving all the operations. So I would assume that that means that they're moving the still as well. I guess so. Yeah, that's, um, I don't know. As you heard it here first, the new label for Still Austin will be Still Austin T O O. So that's going to be the new Austin. Still Austin, still Austin 2. two? Yeah. <laughs> Instead of also, they'll use T O O. Instead, yeah, yeah. to respond to brands sitting on shelves, think of the discourse you're having now. Smoke Wagon was popular, but still Austin is having its moment. Consumer attention is finite, like the products. Yeah, Nathan, that's a good point, too. Good call. I feel like, yeah, I feel like every time we see a brand kind of fall to the wayside a little bit and kind of people get a little bit, I don't know, tired of it and chasing it. 
um, without doing something new and exciting, people are always quick to move to the next thing. And that is, that's whiskey. There, there's ways you have to keep things fresh and exciting. And um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Let's get to, uh, I thought that was an April Fool's joke. It might be, was it? I hope not. <laughs> hope not? Uh, Wait, you hope you not? Hope it, you hope it was. I hope that they moved to Kentucky, and here's why. What? Why? I think that they will fall. And they'll see the error of their ways, and then they'll move back to Texas. <laughs> no, just like April Fools, and it never happened. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah unless no. they keep, so, yeah, like I, if they, they can move there. Just don't move the Rick House. <laughs> like, let it still age. All right, let's uh, let's let's talk about a bottle that everyone said was surprised was not on my. I'm not going to buy any more list, and that is Booker's. Um, this is the wow. latest batches of Booker's. This is the latest batch of Booker's. It's called the Springfield Batch. Um, this takes its name from the small Kentucky town where the legendary master distiller for the Jim Beams brand Booker No grew up. So as you guys know, $89.99 for this one. This one's 124.5 proof. And as we've been seeing, we've been seeing the ages go up a little bit uh, into that seven-year age statement. And that's what this one is. This is seven years, seven months, and eight days old and sped time maturing in uh, straight up new white oak barrels. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I have been hearing a lot of really good things about that bottle. Uh, like as far as like a, a the, the newest bookers, it's one of those things where I left it off my list because I still do buy it for reviews because people do love bookers still. Uh, but at the same time, bookers is the bottle that made me fall in love with bourbon. So I have a hard time just being like, I'm Xing, I'm Xing you out of my life. I don't know. <laughs> That's. That's me. I, are you guys? Are you guys like not buying that anymore, or you still get curious depending on the batch? I, I haven't bought curious. a batch since 2020. <laughs> oh wow! Oh, 2020 was your last batch. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. Okay. I can't say the same on that. Was that the Country Ham years? Is that 2020? Country Ham was 03, 2019, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have it. I have it right over there. Yeah, it's 2019. The Country Ham. Oh I, crap! I still have a half a bottle left. I brought That's like it. one, like out of the three releases, probably each of the years on like note from like somebody saying it was good. Like Vic was talking this one up. I've heard you're saying it. Like I haven't had it, um, but they they do sit, which is nice. Yeah, you know, but the price point still is just a little iffy sometimes. Yeah, I guys, just so we can go back, I said this from the beginning about Stellum. They're the thing that happened with Stellum, I think, is that when it did come out and it was like 40 or 50 bucks, yeah, it was a kind of nice, cheaper blend versus the barrel bourbon blends. But then once they started making premium blends of Stellum and everything was the same price as the regular barrel, mm -hmm. there was no there was no more differentiator. Like, why are you now putting a premium on Stellum when it's supposed to be your, you know, your budget offering from barrel? So right. and and I can never get a good reason why they chose to do that or what was the real differentiator because it was still a blend of Kentucky, Indiana, and Tennessee whiskeys, uh, just like the Barrelcraft bourbon blends. But now you're just like using younger whiskey and we're you know supposed to pay like half the money for it. But then you start premiumizing it, premium, premium, premiumizing it, <laughs> whatever that word is. <laughs> And uh, and now you want us to pay the same price for, for barrel, so there's no differentiator uh, anymore. And I think when you have that, and Barrelcraft Spirits, you already had a hard time kind of people buying that because of the Tennessee Dickel that's in those blends. Now you're just putting another one out there with a different blend of Dickel at the same price. It's just it, now you're now you're telling people to choose between the two, and they're going to end up not buying either. And I think that's what happened, unfortunately. Yeah. I, I I'm not a bean fan for the most part. Um, I, the Booker's batches that I like are so off profile. Booker's like Kentucky Tea, like I think that was a great batch, but it's not Booker's profile. So um, those are the kind of batches that I tend to like if I do like Booker's. Uh, Kentucky Chew is the other one that I can think of that I really really like that was a little bit more Booker's profile, but yeah yeah yeah. Uh, well well. Real quick, we just talk about this ridiculousness a little bit. Uh, 
rabbit hole rabbit hole is bringing back the founders collection uh batch two of the Mizanora bourbon and you know whatever guys 15 year old straight kentucky bourbon it's probably either beam or uh, i'm guessing it's either beam or barton and it's finished in Mizanora, and they want you to pay fifteen hundred dollars for it <laughs> at a hundred and at a hundred and three point eight proof um yeah, again, this is one of those things where Rabbit Hole is trying to become a – oh, yeah, Rabbit Hole was actually on my list of bourbons I'm not going to buy anymore. Um, and that and that bottle right there is a big reason why. I feel like, again, Rabbit Hole is trying to position themselves as a premium type of brand, a luxury brand. And for whatever reason, Rabbit Hole does not come off as a luxury brand to me. So asking people to pay $1,500 for a Mizanora cask bourbon – is a little bit insane. Um, Forgate released the Mizanora one for two hundred twenty-five bucks. Is that that's more than nothing expensive for me? Why am I paying fifteen hundred for that? I don't. Yeah. I don't care if it's made from Mr. Miyagi's personal, uh, uh, you know, Mizanora tree. I'm not paying the money for it. Sorry. It well, even their five-year single barrels, the labels are cool, but they try to sell them for two hundred, and they just sit. yeah, like Jeff, so do you remember? Much. Dude, how long did all of those rabbit hole picks sit on the shelves here in Ohio when Ohio launched them? Nobody was buying them. Like when they had allocation day, they were all just sitting there lined up. Like nobody was buying those picks. It's just the prices are insane. And I'm not really sure why their model is as such. It's a little bit, it's a little bit too high. I mean, I respect what they're doing to a point, but I think their pricing model is definitely out of touch and no one's buying that stuff. Um Andrew Santino drinks a ton of rabbit hole on his podcast. Um, yeah, there's probably better stuff for the money, to be honest, though. <laughs> yeah. Rabbit um, rabbit hole is what McCallum is to Scotch. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which one is more off-putting, uh, rabbit hole or blue run? <laughs> you know, honestly, it's like bottles like that from, from rabbit hole makes blue runs pricing look, you know, Progressive. <laughs> like, it's like a fifteen hundred dollar Mizanora cast. Like Blue Run is a bargain compared to that shit. Like my goodness gracious. Uh oh, did I miss the super chat? Let me That's go. That's the me first nice thing I think I've ever heard him say about Blue Run. There you go. He'll never say I never said anything nice about Blue Run. Uh Liddy Casanova, Blanton's gold or straight from the barrel. If you have to choose one, straight from the barrel, hands down. Not even close. <laughs> yeah, not even close. Great. Not even close. Not even close, Liddy. Just get the straight from the barrel. Don't even think about it. The gold is good. I don't think it's great. I think when you're talking about a step up in 10 proof points for the gold versus the regular, I think there's still some similarities there. You want to get a whole different experience for your money, go up to the straight for the barrel. It's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Luke Stevens giving us the graphics, rabbit versus butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. What else do we got here, guys? A lot of, uh, a lot of fun. Oh, this one's pretty cool. Uh, I know a couple of people have been dropping this in, in some whiskey groups, and this is the new Orphan Barrel release. This is Indigo's Hour. So, now we, we kind of talked about this a while back, uh, when this was first announced, and now we have all the details for it. So, let me go through this. This is the limited, this is a limited release bourbon, as they always are. Uh, it celebrates the transitional period between dusk and night. That's why it's called Indigo's Hour. So there, there you guys go. That That's that's all the marketing you need right there. <laughs> this is an 18-year-old bourbon whiskey with a suggested retail price of 225 bones. Uh, the whiskey company that aims to rescue nearly forgotten barrels shared Indigo's Hour is a limited production bourbon celebrating. Yeah, I already said that. The Diageo-owned brands share the whiskey. Uh, let's see. The, the whiskey and its journey are represented through the bottle's colorful label, which features a pipe vine, swallowtail, butterfly. More fucking butterflies. Um, <laughs> the butterfly is native to Indiana, which is where the bourbon was distilled from. A mash bill of 68% corn, 28% rye, and 4% malt. After that, it aids for 18 years in charred white oak barrels, in a facility a few minutes away from Louisville, Kentucky. That sounds so weird. In, 
in a facility a few minutes away from Louisville. So where is it? <laughs> because of that, the bottle includes a depiction of one of Kentucky. Okay, this is way too much uh, speak here. Uh, what What's the proof on it? 90 proof. Okay, probably, there you go. Yeah, probably 90. Yeah, done. Uh, what do you guys say? Yay or nay on that one? Nay. They charge too much yeah. for it. If it's like 100 yeah. bucks. Even it's eighteen years, right? We get it. But what if, what if that bottle was one hundred and seven proof? Nay. Eighteen year, eighteen year old, one hundred seven proof for two hundred twenty five. You wouldn't be somewhat enticed by that. Be no. a be a try before I buy type of a situation. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. I, I thought you guys would be like, hmm, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe. Let's like see. Here um, again, but that mash bill is weird. I don't even know if that's MGP. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's see. Gotta stretch those barrels. Corn and whiskey says pass. Mm. Jeff Perkins says I immediately think great whiskey when there's a butterfly on the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Was it aged in Indiana? Well so Louisville, if you do go over the bridge, you're pretty much immediately in Indiana. So I mean it could be minutes away from there, but I'm trying to think. What's over there? Like, is that Starlight's the closest thing that way, right? Yeah. Isn't isn't the no? I'm gonna say isn't isn't Michter's place technically in Indiana, or is it right on the border? Michter's not Louisville. Not the. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about Fort Nelson. I'm talking about the Shively uh, Distillery. Oh shit! I don't know. Hmm. Not sure. Yeah, I don't know. So. Uh, yeah, the closest place is Starlight. Uh, change the name to KC18 and see it if the opinion changes. Uh, got to be a higher proof to interest to me. So you guys in the chat, if that was 107 proof for 225, 18 years old, would you bo would you be more uh, would you be more uh, teased to pull the trigger on that? I'm just curious. I'm just wondering if the price is holding people back because it's got a good age on it. Is it the price or the proof or is it both? I don't know. For me, it's the company. I don't, also, trust, I don't have a sense of trust with that particular well, company. So, well, I mean, it's not it's not Dickel in there. Does that help? No. A lot of their higher age stuff is Dickel, which yeah, you know. but that's part of the issue is that they've been so hit and miss. So like I, I tried an orphan barrel from the likes when they had it was twenty two or twenty three years old, and it was good, but it yeah, wasn't. Yeah, it was. I don't know. It just when brands like that try to tout the I don't know the cele not celebrity that's not the word I'm looking for but higher priced whiskey and being a luxury I guess that's what I'm trying to do yeah that's that's the one I tried yeah uh, those are Pappy twenty essentially Pappy twenty three yeah those yeah. are actually pretty yeah good. yeah that one was good but it's just then you taste something else like the one what was the one with the, the copper tongue. That was horrible. Oh, yeah. That one was terrible. Yeah. I mean, absolutely horrid. The last Whoa. one I bought, the last one I ever bought is actually right here, and that is the Fable and Folly. Oh, that, was um, that was the scotch, though. That, wow. one, that one tempted me. No, I think it's a boo right? right? No. It's a boo -rye? This a, yeah. This is a 14-year uh, blend, I believe. But again, 90 proof. Um, this one wasn't bad, but as you can see, I didn't really drink it after the first sip, so I guess it's not that great. Jay, I'm going to reset on my end. Everybody else is good, but you're freezing like every second. My phone's showing you perfect, hmm. so I'm just going to back out and re, re All right. Yeah, Sounds good, man. Really quick. See if I can. Uh, all right, guys. So before we get into the blind tasting of all of our beautiful blends here, um, looks like you've been killing that bottle, says JG. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's let's get some quick reactions to some, uh, some Instagram uh, coming whiskey posts. Show you some new blends here or some new labels. Let's start with this one. Um, Heaven Hill Grain to Glass. Did you guys hear about this one yet? I did. Yeah. I did. Uh, so Heaven Hill Grain to Glass. The story behind the bottle here says since 1935, Heaven Hill Distillery has been dedicated to crafting the highest quality Kentucky whiskeys. This led to us start at the very beginning, the seed. Each year, our master distiller partners with fellow family-owned uh, seed companies, uh, Beck Hybrids, and to hand select the, let's see, the unicorn and varietals. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Each release is a testament to our continued commitment. 
So is this going to be, well, this is, a, this is a rye, but is this going to be any different than their regular stuff? I'm guessing this is just a different, um, well, the mash bill is different for sure. It mm -hmm. looks like it says 63, 24, 13 there. Is that their standard rye mash bill? Mm, that's a good I question. thought it was 51 something. I thought that's it was what I thought, That's what I thought it was. So it looks like it's a just like yeah. brand new mash bill too there, which is kind of cool. Yeah, Pikesville um, is like 51. Yeah. Uh, all right. That's the first one. Next one, Yellowstone 101. This is the yeah. new LE 2024 release. Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey finished in cognac and brandy casks. It's better finishing than the last few years. This this is a make or break year, I think, for the LE for me because I love cognac and brandy finished uh, whiskeys, and if if they screw this one up, I'm out. I'm not buying a Yellowstone LE ever again. <laughs> I, I got That's one like keep, two years ago. That's the I last keep one. saying that, and they keep getting me, Jason. It's on right on the verge, but then I like go to Kroger, I pick up groceries for the family, and there's the Yellowstone Special Edition. I'm like, oh, I gotta get it. The last one, <laughs> the last one I had that I really liked was the Amarone, the Amarone wine one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of people saying that sounds good. Sign me up. Yes to the Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You guys are in on it. Okay. And Yellowstone went through that weird thing, too, where it was like it was too expensive three years ago, but now they've kept it at 120 where I'm like, oh, okay. It's not too bad. Now. Yeah. It, this is this is going to be a little bit kind of like their own little cigar blend thing here. I kind of dig it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wonder if that if it gets rebranded like Yellowstone cigar blend. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's check this one out, guys. Old Foresters dropping a bottled and bond rye in the 117 series, a 100 proof, um, bottled and bond rye whiskey, which kind of, um, boggles my mind because the old Forester rye we're blending with is 100 proof. So, right. Yeah. What? I what the uh, two year I old. Think they, I think they <laughs> ran out of ideas, Jason. Uh, we're just going to put this in a smaller bottle and sell it to you guys. Um, <laughs> Paul Pastor Rye whiskey reflects the unique flavor of the unusually cool and wet fall of 2014. Oh. That Wait, that's, sound... that's old. Look at that though. If it's 2014 to 2025, yeah, so that's gonna have some age on 11 it. Year, 11 year rye. Yeah, that could be an 11 year old too. rye whiskey right there. All right, so there's your selling point, people. Yeah, yeah. there we go. It's Red uh, redemption. Redemption for old Forrester. It's a 10 to 11 year old rye. I'll be. I'll be trying to get one of those. That sounds good. Uh, Remus is coming out with the Babe Ruth Reserve straight bourbon whiskey, a medley of three mash bills uh, from 2016, 2017, and 2018. Looks like a 12%. Uh, let's see. 12% of it is a 44% rye. 70% mm -hmm. of it is a, is that 49? 49% rye? Yeah, yeah. It's and 49. It's the highest rye. Yeah, Release and eighteen. Out. Yeah, eighteen percent is their thirty-six rye. So this is a, this is a a, a high rye lovers mash bill, one hundred eleven proof. The Babe Ruth Reserve. It's a spicy meatball. I can't wait for that one. At least uh, they upped the proof on that. So if you notice, yeah. the proof there was one eleven rather than a hundred proof. So at yeah, least yeah, they're yeah. learning there, but they're still going to charge a premium. And oh, battery uh -oh. exhausted. Ah, the inmates run the asylum. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh no! He's gonna be on the other camera. <laughs> but the oh, uh, you know, it still struggle with the price. I didn't see what they were doing the Babe Ruth for. I'd imagine it's a hundred or hundred and twenty. So that's still gonna yeah, be. I think it's probably not a good deal compared right. to any single barrels on those same mash bills that are out right now. Yeah, I think it'll be less than like the Remus, like Gatsby, because that's what like two fifty. It's probably gonna be like a one fifty to one seventy five bottle. I think. Oh, I hope they keep it just like the numbered series. Gosh, they went even uh, higher. I don't think That'd it's be crazy, be, man. You know, because they're they're tying. Yeah. Whoa, you see the big camera oh. lens. <laughs> seeing seeing uh, Jason at all new uh, angles tonight. <laughs> there we go. That's not that's not bad. Okay. No, no, no. It looks better yeah. For some reason, way. my camera wasn't uh, charging this whole time, which kind of that kind of sucks. But um, that uh, that camera actually doesn't look bad. Yeah, did Jason fall again? Yeah, it, you would think I did fall again. <laughs> um, all right, let me uh, let me just point this down a little bit more so we can see kind of the blends. Okay, yeah, that's better. That works. Actually, yeah, far off. Yeah, yeah it doesn't look too bad. All right, so now we have yes. There you go. Sneakerhead. <laughs> the two XO sneaker head blend, guys. This is the one we've been talking about, Dixon Dead and Sneakerhead blend. 
then it says a collection of limited time small batch blends. Uh, this one it comes from my love and passion for sneaker culture, as well as collectibles that represent one's unique sense of style. Yeah, I'm going to get a case of that shit. I don't care how much it is. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's go back to the comments. Uh, let's see here. Mark Gillikin, $10 for a new battery, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, for Jason, that's a buy and back it up. I'm not going to even review that one because it's going to be so, like, biased. I can't even, yeah, you guys can't <laughs> buy that regardless. I'll, I'll be like, uh, maybe skip this one, and then you're going to see, like, 15 of them on my shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sagamore should have done a Babe Ruth Rye because he was a Baltimore bartender as a teenager. Oh, that's a nice little tidbit. Uh, will that drop on the sneakers app? That'd be amazing if it did. Actually, it wouldn't be amazing because it get gobbled up. That's the one. The sneaker blend will be a hit. Hopefully, hopefully it's a really good blend too. It's not just a, uh, you know, it's not like I don't know, a not so great blend. I guess I don't know. All right, guys, are you ready to do this? Yes, I'm ready. Let's do I'm it. Ready. I'm going to mix right. them up again. Let me take them out of my little holder. Mix them up again. Yeah. Mix and match. Twirl these around a bit. Yeah, I'll twirl them around one more time, even though I can't possibly Kelsey remember. Kelsey Ajiro's random this time. Yes, it is. <laughs> give it, uh, give it, it on. Give it the old swirl job again. Yep. Right, throw those there. <clears throat> All right. All right, guys, it is time to find out who blended it better. Uh oh. Let's see if I can keep my streak going here. <laughs> we have and in the end, nothing. all you're going to do is rank them yourselves one to four. Yeah. Whatever points you give yourself doesn't matter, but. We'll this is scary. This is, yeah, this is kind of scary now because it's like, uh, yeah, it's like, man, I hope I don't think my own blend sucks now. We we'll could see. potentially have a tie, right? We can. So. Put nose in there. Yeah, we can rank noses first, just to be safe. Rank nose. Okay, yeah. Let me let me grab my pen here. We can rank rank that. Ooh, the first one smells good. And then uh, in chat, let us know if you're blending along with us. We've been posting the the blends that we're doing here. Just curious if anyone's able to do it with yeah, us. Did anyone uh, try to blend these themselves? Yeah, but, uh, this is what happens when you drink old number seven. Jason's battery takes a shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, at least uh, at least my backup camera still looks nice. That's good. Yeah, yeah it and used to be I, like a little foggy one. This one's way better than whatever. Yeah, though. He used yeah, to be no, the Blair Witch Project. Yeah, this is uh, this is a new laptop, so the camera on it is actually really nice. So. Uh, it's a nice little setup now. So if my camera dies like it just did, which is weird because the battery's plugged in. I don't know why it wasn't charging while it was on, but it wasn't. Um, but it's like charging now, which is strange. So I don't know what's going on. But uh, this this backup camera is actually pretty nice. So you watch with the nose round. They will still. So how do you guys want to rank? What what do you want to give the noses? Like, are you just ranking it like best to worst? Yeah. Yeah. Just let me know A, B, C, D, your ranking, and then we'll okay. only have to reverse engineer it later. So keep your order intact from this moment. Okay. On. Got okay. it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Actually, I'm going to write my A, B, C, D on these. Uh, Jason Vornick says, Jason, I got as close as I could with open bottles. Did Jeff's blend with KC15, JD10, EW single barrel, and Old Forest Rye close enough? Okay. Okay. That, that worked. KC15. Nice. <clears throat> I got to say, all these noses are pretty decent. I'm, I'm through two right now, and the first two smell nice. Ooh. Hmm. Okay. There's two, actually, for me. I don't know what, or, what, what they are, but smell very similar. This first one is kind of the most muted. This might be my last place one. I'm just not getting enough off of it. Um, I have other ones here that are jumping out of the glass. Are, are you guys getting that in any of them? I'm I've got two that are muted. Not that that's a bad sign for two people that pick very similar blends, but I've got two that are muted. 
That's probably you and Darrell. <laughs> I definitely don't. I definitely don't like. I definitely don't like that one. Oh yeah, I like. I think two and four are kind of my leaders in the clubhouse here. Or B or B and D, however you want to. Okay. Oh yeah, guys, do you want to go uh, over the giveaways tonight again for Cheech uh, for the GoFundMe? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So why don't we, uh, Kelsey? Why don't you kick it off? So I'm going to do all of my open bottles of Stag, which is Stag Junior. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve batches. I think it's thirteen through the la the latest batch. So I'll do so the same. So, so the first is a thirteen sample set. Thirteen Stag sample set. That's crazy. Jeez. Okay. All right. And then Jeff, what do you got? I'm throwing in a flight, very similar themed, but with ECBP. I went over there and I did count my bottles, and I believe it would be a 20 bottle uh, sampling. So they'll each be one ounce samples. There'll be 20 of them. The oldest one will be a pirate bottle, batch 10. Uh, and then every batch from 2019 through present will be accounted for. And then there's some of the one random ones in between. Damn, dude. Holy crap. Makes Darrell, what about you? <laughs> Makes my two bottles look like crap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing in an ECBP bottle. Uh, it's A122, and I have a seven-year copper and cast single barrel that's local to me. This is actually a really, really good pick. Oh, guys, um, let me tell you, whoever, whoever gets that pick is going to be – that thing is so good. You haven't had this one. You had oh, I haven't had – oh, that's not the one that you had me try? No, no, no. Oh, this, okay. All that right. one's – that one's better, but this is still really, really good. This one's a good one. Jeff has yeah. this one. And again, if you guys want to get in any of these giveaways, uh, please click the uh, GoFundMe link that's pinned in the comment section of the uh, of the live stream right now. Uh, on top of that, I'm going to be donating a, uh, a Peerless, our newest Peerless Rye single barrel. And I'm also going to be donating uh, a, you know, I'll do a, I'll do two 10 packs of some Mash and Journey samples. Ooh, wow. So two 10 packs of some Mash and Journey picks uh, that we've selected over the years. I won't relegate it to like just last year, but all the all the hits from over the last few years um, yeah. you'll get in in the uh, in the sample pack. So nice. everything everything we need to uh, to raise some money for uh, Chicharron. Okay, yep. sounds good. And man. to be clear, it's five dollars per entry. Uh, the Turks are tracking, and it's all entry since uh, essentially eight p.m. Eastern that we're tracking until we call it. I got my nose ranked. Me too. I'm gonna go. I got I got my nose ranked too. Okay. So we get a mm. taste. So give me. Do you want to give me your rankings? Oh yeah, I okay. can. Are we doing A through D or one through four? Uh, either. Man, these two are similar. Um, <clears throat> rank A through D in okay. numbers for me. Wait. Oh, okay. So you want to go last to first? Sure. Okay. Last would be B, then D, and C, and then A. Okay. You said B, D, C, A? Yeah, that's last to first. No, it was Kelsey. Okay. Uh, Joe Wanninger says, Jason, I do a Discovery 1 through 11 one ounce sample pack for taking donations. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Yeah, we can add that from Joe. That's, that's a, great, that's them, a right? fun flight. That's, that's a all of them. killer flight, man. That's yeah. a killer flight. Disco. You get, to really, you get to really go on a roller coaster. Yeah, Disco 1 through 11. Um, let's see. Uh, Kelsey, you're doing 12 stags. Yep. Uh, Juniors, that is. Whack is doing 140 ECBPs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 20 different releases. Put, put approximately 20, just in case I counted wrong. Appro <laughs> whatever's, whatever's open. Approximately 20 ECBPs. <laughs> uh, Darrell is doing an ECBP bottle. And, and the copper and cast pick. Single barrel, yeah. And Jason is doing, uh, let's see, I'm doing a Peerless Rye and the uh, two M&J 10-packs. Okay, I got all of them. 
All right. Uh, let's see here. Balcones is doing a straight corn whiskey at cast strength. I'm waiting for someone to be like, I'm throwing in a sample set of the bottles and the blends. <laughs> uh, yeah. what's, left of, what's left of the JD7 goes to anybody that wants it. <laughs> yeah. It's going to find its way in some Coke with me. I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right. Actually, no, no, no. We do. Do we do the nose rankings yet? Yeah. So, I'm I, I'm on to yours, Jason. So, what's your ranking? All right. So, A is fourth, B is second, C is third, and D is first. Wait, you said A is fourth. A is fourth, B is second, C is third, and D is first. Okay. And then. Uh, mine is D is fourth, C is third, A is second, B is first. Okay. So you are out. Sorry. D, C, A, B. D, C, B, A from last to first? Yes. So B is my favorite. Jay, you went from first to last on yours, right? No, I went from, I went from, I went from fourth to first on mine. Wow. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for my ranking, I have A, B, uh, D, C, sorry. A, B, D, C. Okay. All right. Let's get tasting. This will only come right. into play if we have a tie. Yeah. Michael, yeah, somebody's monitoring the uh, – the Turks are monitoring the GoFundMe page. So they'll yep. be keeping track of all of those donations for you guys. Mm. tell you what i'm happy about off that first sip and i was finding it throughout the blending process but the mouthfeel on these it's got some good oiliness and viscosity to it more so than i thought going into this that's, that's interesting you said that because this first one that i'm trying i'm not so crazy about the palate but the viscosity i'm very impressed with especially when using these four you wouldn't think viscosity yeah, mm -hmm. but this blend, whichever, whosoever this is, actually created some really nice viscosity from this blend. Yeah, they all pretty much stick to the glass, and that's that's the one thing I pointed out last stream. I was surprised about like I'm looking and like they're sitting like midway through the glass, just dripping down. You know, and the nine years the the oldest one, right? Everything else is probably what two to four years. Yeah. Uh, main power. Uh... So the best part of this first one for me is the finish on it. This has like a sneaky long finish, which I love. But the front of the palate's missing something. But the finish on it is A1 steak sauce. Hmm. Um, have you seen Jim Beam giving the black label an H statement? Say what you will about Jim Beam, but they're killing the H statement game. Yeah, Terrence. Um, I pulled up that label. Yeah, it's been a few months since that hit the TTB where the Jim Beam Black is getting the seven-year age statement. And, I, I mean, for the amount of whiskey Jim Beam is pumping out, they can do more age statements. Uh, I think more people should lean into that. But, unfortunately, that hasn't caught on with everybody quite yet. But if there is one distillery killing it with age statements, it's definitely Jim Beam. And, and honestly, I think that the Jim Beam Black is probably one of the more underrated – um offerings in their lineup because yeah i know it's kind of like extra age or whatever that means but um and really the extra age for the black label is just in comparison from to their white label it's older than their white label you know there's nothing really special they you know it's not like the devil's cut or it's not like what they do with the double oak there's just a higher age than the white label but now that they're putting a seven-year age statement on it and making it that type of a low price point, it's it's pretty fantastic. I think it's nice to see some of these more affordable bottles dropping and also getting uh, age statements added to them. It's kind of nice. Agreed. Nice. Uh, Chris Garner, I saw someone did a review on it. Oh, so there's a review on it already. I gotta I gotta check that out. Um, I haven't seen that one yet. Uh, tomorrow I'm dropping my review for. The oh, new Michter, so it's a double rye review tomorrow. The new Michter's Barrel Strength Rye for 2024, and another little hidden gem that Beam released, the 
the A Overholt Monongahela Rye. Did you guys hear about this one? No, no, no I've no. seen it. This yeah, a, I think I might have tried it. I'm not This is a pretty little bottle right here. So it's the Monongahela <laughs> Old uh, A Overholt Straight Rye Whiskey. Um, this is uh, where's the proof on this baby? It's uh, it's non chill filtered. And it is shit. Where the, oh, there it is. 95 proof on this thing. Oops. That bottle is killer. I love that bottle shape on that. Yeah, it's a uh it's kind of a spicy meatball, I'll tell you that much, even at 95 proof. But that's what Monongahela is. So hey Jeff, on the nose, I actually flip-flopped. I gave you first to last. Um, so it's actually C B, sorry, C D B A. <laughs> I was so saying C, first, second, C is, third place. C is last place. Yeah, yeah. C, okay. D, Charlie, Delta, Bravo, Alpha. There's there's always one, you know, always <laughs> one person. <laughs> uh, yeah, Terrence, everybody. <laughs> yeah, Terrence McDermott, this is a new bottle that Jim Beam released. Kind of sneaky. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't really hear much about it, um, but it's the A Overholt Monongahela Rye. So this is a different rye mash bill than the standard Jim Beam rye mash bill. This is has way more of a... Uh, Way more rye content in it. Um, I'll try that. This is 80% uh, rye and 20% malted barley. So it's an 80-20, which, which historically was a very typical, other than the 100% rye, that was a pretty typical mash bill back in the day. So, hmm. Is that tinted glass, Jay? Yes, it is tinted. The whiskey is not this dark, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> it is tinted. <laughs> what would be the price point on that one, Jay? Uh, actually, I don't know. Someone sent that to me. I don't even know what that was. Um, let me see. Man, I, and I'm trying to remember from my review. Uh, I want to say it was like. Let's see here. As you're looking that up, my face is getting smacked with a whole lot of banana. <laughs> banana? Banana. That would be Darrell. No. Oh, my gosh. Like 2 percent to everybody else is like 1%. Like. I know. And that little bit more is like, <laughs> woo. It's, getting, <laughs> it's power and through. I think you're going to be impressed. surprised. I don't think that's mine. That'd be, I'm, I'm calling D as Darrell. <laughs> Off of my first, your, your of my first run your through, B. my B, yeah. Interesting. I'm gonna write that right. down. Woo, man, that's Jack. Really? Wow, that's interesting. I mean, I guess you're Jack and Old Forester, so you're kind of doubling up on those flavors. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. But uh, so let's see. This was this was only forty bucks. Oh, nice. Forty bucks. I'd buy it just for the bottle at forty bucks. It's a cool looking ass bottle, man. It is. I like like the medicinal. Ooh, number two is nice. Or letter B here. Um, that's a nice. Uh, that's a nice little palette there. Yeah, out of the first two, the second one for me is a lot better. I think over the first one. Yeah, it's crazy. the The wow. first one, the first one actually has a longer finish, Damn. but the front and mid palette are just too flat. But it's got this crazy sneaky long. I'm really curious to see which one that one is. And then yeah. the, uh, the second one has a little bit more of a spice driven complexity to it from front to back, which I like. Um, and I will say, even A coming off of, of B, I think A still has a better viscosity. Hmm. Hmm. So we, we may find a, we may find like a good, you know, may find a, another good blend in here that just needs some tweaking because. Yeah. Yeah, it's this is pretty cool. So, yeah, neither one. So the first two have been pretty decent, just lacking in some areas, right? Like I don't think I, I only taste it too, but none of them are like, yeah, like I'm not gonna pour it again. Like if I had it on my bar, like I think it's better than each of. Well, the 1783 I really like in terms of flavor, but the first two of these are better than standalone three of the other bottles we're blending, in my opinion. Yeah. Three, three is okay. Three's got a nice little even, even Steven palette. Nothing jumping out. We'll need another sip of that one. We'll see if any of us put our own blend in last. <laughs> right? 
Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, three's three's palette actually is is really nice. Um oh, for sure. Wow, the nose on this change. Holy shit. I've got I've got two of these that do well in the front but don't finish well. They're kind of just even Steven all the way through. Two of them, two of them got an experience and a ride to them. I think I'm already down to a two horse race here. Mm. Yeah, if you guys can while you're hanging out here, please hit the like button. Uh, and also just leave a comment below. It definitely helps out. The, the channel, and not even just for me, but even for uh, Jeff and Darrell and Kelsey on their channels. Uh, as I mentioned in some videos uh, lately, YouTube is really focus focusing on the algorithms and interactivity within each video. Uh, so likes, comments, engagement, uh, they're really kind of putting a premium on it. So it's really the best way to help uh, channels, um, smaller channels, bigger channels, whatever channels you support to help them grow. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, it takes two seconds. Just leave a quick comment and give a thumbs up when you can. This is interesting. My worst news going through is actually really, really good now that it's been sitting a bit. And the palette on it is actually maybe my favorite so far for my third glass. Yeah, I'm at 88.9 thousand right here. I'm trying to... I'm gonna have to do a couple of more, uh, a couple of more clickbaiters to get to that hundred. Yeah. I need, a, I need a couple more videos like the ones I'm not buying anymore. That thing got a ton of views, so it was pretty cool. You need an entire series on NFT. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, I'll be back to like seventy-five thousand by the end of the month. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Shit. Man. Oh my goodness! Oh man, this last one is. Everything Steve is good. I hope yeah, this good. thing. This thing has a finish. This thing has a finish for days. Oh man, yeah, the finish on my C. Yeah, oh, whoever this is is freaking great. Oh man, and the flavors are nice too. Like I got it. I got it listed as balanced, nice medium and medium to long finish, decent oak, like. So that, so so Let's Cheech see. brings up an interesting point. He said whiskey Nike pairings. Um, I'm actually looking. So I watch a lot of obviously sneaker videos too, and I uh, I there's a lot of like similarities with like the whiskey reviews and sneaker reviews. Obviously, you know sneakers are you know there's a collectability factor to that too, as well as whiskey pricing. You know can be all over the place, just like whiskey. So. I think there's some uh, there's some cool ideas that are like crossovers from like you know stuff that people do like uh, you know like collection uh, collection videos and going to stores and seeing what different sneaker stores has very much like whiskey. It's again, it's like that collectability thing. It's it's kind of cool. I do get some ideas from um, from like sneaker videos from my own, which is kind of kind of cool. So I hope the tasting notes are exclusively on the whiskey side. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, well, do you know about no one's you know, like licking the shoes or anything, right? And telling. Well, do you know like. about the? Uh, do you know about the drinking you know from the, the shoe? No, no. Do you know about them smelling the shoe? No, uh, -uh. they do smell the smell the leather. So, so they'll so they'll do this. So, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of sneaker heads will open a new box, a new a new sneaker, and they pick it up and they they go like that and they smell it because the reason why they do that is. If you smell like to try to smell either like a fake plastic or to smell leather, so it's kind of a way to tell the quality of the shoe without like having to like rip it apart. So, but one of my favorite channels, uh, called Wear Testers, the guy Chris, uh, he goes by Nightwing. He, um, every, every single video, he smells it and he's like, he's like, smells like shit, smells like good, <laughs> <It's> like leather, <laughs> it's earthy. Yeah, it's earthy. It's got earthy tones. So I just they, they take a big whiff of it. They think it's a new shoe and ends up being a used yeah. shoe. It's like, oh <laughs> yeah. Uh mash and drum swimsuit calendar. Uh well yeah, maybe maybe when I drop when I keep dropping some more weight. I, I've already dropped like eight pounds and I'm still going at it. Uh you should do a video when you're sitting outside drinking bourbons or rocking different Jord Jordans. Yeah, that might be kind of cool. Yeah. Jason, going back to the swimsuit calendar, you just get your bottles and you get little mini bikinis and just do B rolls <laughs> with, the, with the, the bottles. Yeah, like through the, the crazy music. 
That's awesome. I don't know. For me, I think it's between three and four. Same, same here, I think, for me. <clears throat> they hold their weight a little bit more. Like the finish on my third and fourth glass. Um, Dude, I like four. On the other whatever two. four is has a killer finish. I think that's going to be my, yeah. So it was my first on my nose, too. Um, but C, which had third on the nose, I think is second on my palate. I, I really did that one. It's going to be tough to overtake. I'm going to go through these one more time here, guys. I'm going to do the uh, same. I think I can rule out the first two, but I think my third and fourth glass are probably the top two for me. The Mark B says, uh, listening to you guys blinding these blends is making me rethink buying these bottles for blending. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's I, I think – yeah, I think as just a just a fun exercise to do at home, um, you know, take a few bottles that you know you maybe, you know, what I like to do is take two bottles I really like and two bottles I find that are like ant and try to make it better collectively, and see how that works. Um, I've learned a lot just doing that because you can you can try to hide the whiskey you don't like sometimes. And then sometimes the whiskey you don't like actually will just take over the blend itself. Yeah. It's a very it's a very delicate balance. Blending is really really tough. Um, I always go back to I think Amy Bohm said this that legend. She said that uh, you know the distillers make the paint, but the blenders um, actually paint the painting. And I think there's a really beautiful art form to blending that definitely goes. You know, I think there are some blenders like Nancy Fraley um, that get a lot of recognition for how they blend, but I don't think master distillers get enough credit for it because Oof. especially like someone like Connor O'Driscoll who is blending, you know, 500, 600 barrels at a time and how difficult that could be. Um, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, he mentioned last week, you know, he has a full team that does it, that works on it. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's a, uh, it's a, it's, it's gotta be tough, man. And he said, you know, I asked him, you know, do you have a profile going in mind? Like, do you want to hit an age statement? What is it? And he goes, it's just, it's driven by the barrels we have and that's what we work with. And that's it. <coughs> so if anyone thinks there's any preconceived notions about at least on the heaven Hill side about, you know, what they're going to make and what their mindset is, it's all driven by the barrels and nothing else. I think last year I put my mine in fourth, so I'm hoping that's not the case this time. <laughs> you don't want to chug, JD? I, I'm not so worried about that. I just don't want to be in last. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that one. Um, again, this this one is still holding true, the first one. I love the finish on it, but the front of the palace is flat. Yeah. All right. I'm going to try the first two, but they're not going to. I don't know. This second one, every time I go back to it, it's getting better. Um, do I like do I like C over B? Hmm. Guys, I just want to say I think we we all did a great job because these are all the all four of these are really nice sippers. This is tough. I'm really breaking these things apart. I think it should. Uh, KCD said, I tried blending my castle and key to make it better, but no matter what I did, it still tasted like Play Doh. <laughs> See, that, that just goes to my point. Sometimes you just can't fix it, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Uh, Jared O'Connor, are you doing the fantasy bourbon draft again this year? That's my favorite theme every year. Yeah, we'll definitely do that again once, uh, once football starts up, for sure. Is that the one that we did, Jay? With Bourbon yeah. Judge and Scott. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. We'll do that again. Hopefully we get Scott outside drunk again and he doesn't know what he's picking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I know my last place. There's one of these that just doesn't punch through for me anywhere at the experience. It's nice and even keeled all the way through, so it's a good blend on its own. But it has nothing that's shining versus some of these other ones where 
God, this you know, is I'm, so, I'm trying to pick apart the finish finish versus the that mid. Sounds like my the front. A glass. These these two are so these two have different attributes that I'm trying to discern which one I'm gonna put over the other. This this letter B has a nicer sweetness and a kind of a sneaky finish, but letter C here's got more of a spice <laughs> going from front to back, but a little bit less of a sweet, it's a little drier. So I'm mm -hmm. trying to discern which one I like better. Jeff, you shouldn't be so hard on I, yourself. I might be comparing <laughs> the same too, Jason. You think so? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was your even kill one, um, Jeff? What glass? My first glass. I initially first... liked the nose. Okay. Yeah. My first glass. Now is that I've for me. now that I've gotten into it, it's just. It's just steady all the way across without any moments that shine through like some of these other blends have. I think I, like, I think I like two second place. I, I'm think I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it up here. Two has this nice sweetness and then it just goes into a really nice spice. It's not as viscous on the palate, but that flag on the play, late hit finish is winning me over. I'm curious to see which one that is. So I have my I have my ranking. I do as well. Um, Kenneth's been asking this question. I saw it again, so I'm going to draw attention to it. How is this year's 2024 Mictors Barrel Strength Rye? Would you trade Rock Hill Farms for it? I would trade Rock Hill Farms for a Mictors Barrel Strength Rye without All even All day, every day. I, I trade Rock Hill Farms for a 1783 American Hero Edition. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Not even not even second guessing that. Yeah. You can, you can keep. Now, honest, obviously, you don't do that because Rock Hill Farms has a much higher, you know, value yeah. in the whiskey sphere. But I'm just saying, Rock Hill Farms to me, there's nothing really that special about it. Um, yeah. Nope. Jason, uh, at least get yourself 11 1783 American okay. Hero Edition. Okay. Rock Hill yeah. Farms, I'll take 11 1783 American Heroes Edition over that. That works. So close. That they're like, oh, 50 Blantons for this. $20,000 will it? <laughs> uh, all right, let me see here. I'll, you know, I'll crack open this. Uh, I'll crack open the Mictors here. And I'll, I'll let that sit. I'll give you guys a quick live review of this one if you want. Ooh. So it's the 24, right? This is the 24. What's the proof on that? Uh, this one is 110 on the dot. That's pretty high. Okay. Yeah. It dropped down a bit. 20. I think they were were crazy high. They were like up to 116, 115 for some of the the 22s. Or what? No, no, 23. Sorry, last year's. I'll give you guys a live review tonight. Look at the darkness. Kind of nice. Darkness. Darkness. Even That's in a mixture's glass too. <clears throat> oh yeah, look at that. Shit. <laughs> Who knew? Oh, in the dark. This is. Uh, have you guys had uh... Maddie's? Maddie's blend yet? I haven't had it yet. Yeah. Dude, it is it is nutty. Now, I don't mean like nutty as in like it tastes nutty. I mean it's all over the place. It is so it is so crazy good. It is like every time you go back to it, there's something else. And then you go back to it and there's something else. It is all over the place. So it's a really fun blend. Ooh. Smells nice. I'll let that sit out a little bit because it's uh, been hanging out. All right. You want my uh, ranking here? Let's do it. All right. Letter A. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going again worst to first here. Letter A is fourth. Letter B is second place. So third place. What? You said last to first. Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking about like my. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, let me do it that way. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to mess you guys up here. All right. Letter A is fourth. Letter C is third. Oh. Letter B is second. And letter D is first. All right. Okay. Well, thank you, Jason. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, why? You think you're first? <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> Man, you were really hard on yourself while ago, Jeff. You were giving yourself some some real criticism earlier. Yeah, I'm, I don't I'm know. first. I'm first until I'm last. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ricky Booby. 
Uh, Patrick Q, it's a good question. Part of if I'm out of line, but has anyone mentioned how Darrell's daughter is doing? Hope she is well. Uh, Darrell, you want to give any updates for uh, Navia? Yeah, I was just, just reading that as you were uh, mentioning it. Um, back in treatment as of ooh, God, three weeks ago, I think, Patrick. So we honestly won't really know into what they say is maybe about, honestly, a year from now. You know, so we're doing like three months on, about two months off in terms of treatment and reevaluating at the end of each session. So this, no, next week would be another another day in or another weekend, week in. And we're looking at probably, God, two and a half more months. Uh, then like a reevaluation to see what progress is um, and see if, we need to deviate at all, which we haven't had, which is great. Um, so if we can stay course with what we've been doing, um, then that's a good sign. You know what I mean? We haven't had to switch off or anything at all. So fingers across, I stay optimistic all day, um, but it looks promising. I don't want to say it looks okay by any means, but it, look, it looks all right. You know, but I'll really know they say in about a year from now, which was about a year and a half from when we first started up um, mm -hmm. treatment wise. So, okay, you know, a good year from now, like I kind of have a good idea of where we stand and, you know, hopefully at that point, you know, we're looking, we're looking good. Like I got a, I got a barrel King, but I got one of her bottles. So the intents to granted, I have one open, but I want to crack one <laughs> and probably give one away um, when I get some good news, hopefully in about a year or so. So fingers crossed and we shall see yeah. thanks for asking patrick appreciate yeah. that no for sure for sure and you guys feel free to ask like i know like everybody's like yeah i don't know if i should but no you can ask at any point doesn't bother me whatsoever yeah uh, i just don't throw it out there as often you know which i guess i could but yeah feel free to ask whenever <clears throat> Yep. Well, I mean, we're here, I think, we're here I for the fam and you. I'm just happy yeah. that the winner's over for you too, Darrell. Get rid of these, get rid of these bugs going around. So we get the summer and get your household <laughs> healthy in general. It's never end, like, dude, like it's crazy. It went from pink eye to colds to not runny nose. It like it's still not done. You know, like Kai and Kara, runny noses. I'm I'm fine. The wife's fine, but like, <laughs> dude. Like pink guy ravaged this house a week and a half ago. <laughs> like it was nuts. It was nuts. But you know, we're all doing we're all doing well right now, which is good. God, see so good. It's like the one that's like Man. the least amount. I'm, I'm picking there. you up from the airport in 12 hours. You're sure that the pink eyes run its course, right? It is good. My eyes woke up today with they're not being glued <laughs> shut like last week. Couldn't even open them last week. <laughs> it was pretty bad. Woke up last week and I was like, I, I, I can't see. I can't. It was bad. It was bad. But no, I'm good. All right, you guys, you guys going to reveal your rankings here? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I've got Go mine ahead. written down. Um, so I've got A in fourth place, B in third place, which is the one I think is Darrell's. I'll call that out now. Uh, D in second and C in first. Okay. My fourth place is C. My third place is D. My second place is B. And my first place is A. Okay. Darrell. First place. Actually, you want me to go to last to first? Let me do this real quick. One, two. Last to first, my B glass. <clears throat> A glass, C glass, D glass. Okay. And it's it's honestly a toss up between uh, first and second for me. Like they're both really really good. So whatever they are, whoever they whoever blended it, shit, both of those are really good. <laughs> the finish on them are crazy. Jeff Jeff somehow Jeff somehow blended both of them. <laughs> <laughs> That was you last week. <laughs> take, take all the credit. <laughs> oh, jeez. 
Oh, man. Well, why don't we walk through reveal here and rationale? So why don't you give your rationale for what you didn't like about four, what you did like about three, and do do it quickly, but then do a reveal. Uh, Darrell, me. why don't you kick us off? Yeah, yeah we're going reverse that. order here. Nah, because I took notes. makes it easier. Uh, yeah. So on A, I, uh, actually, let's go from last to first. Sorry. So... On B, like I put it as I put it as it like being nicely balanced, but the finish just wasn't it wasn't there for me. Right, it had good flavor, good taste, just finish was lacking. Um, on my third place. So okay. no, now do the reveal. Not just go oh, through it there, so, then I can jot oh, down. Okay, okay. I can jot down things as we go. Wow. So fourth place B was Jason. Number two, right? Is that right? Yeah, fourth. Well, you're okay. wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's yours be the same? <laughs> Actually, wait. I don't even know if you ranked it the same. Oh, no. Yours is third. Actually, no. I don't know what order you got. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's all, it's all mixed. It's all, everyone has a different order, man. Yeah. So. Everyone, that's, that's why I'm asking this way. Yeah. So, no, but it was it was really nice. Like, I was like, sweet rogue, tangy rice spice, less up than all. But the balance was nice. It was just a finish for me. Uh, third place for me was my A class, yep. which was, I said, like, yeah, semi-sweet, vanilla, slight bitter, light on the mouthfeel. So it was the, fin like, the first two were short on the finish. The, the the third and fourth were crazy on finish. This one was Kelsey's. Kelsey's. Okay. Uh, Again, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm getting points. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think it's I think it's hilarious that he has his own and Jeff as one and two. <laughs> well, both of us, when you hopped off, Jeff was like, "I think mine has the highest proof," and I was like, "Mine has a crazy finish." I told him. Yeah, so, oh, that's kind of funny that both of these were. Those I'm ones. wondering. I'm wondering if uh, number two here is yours because the the finish on it was pretty was pretty awesome. The finish, so. yeah, the finish is nuts on mine. Yeah. Um, so. My C glass is third place. And I literally, I just circled very good because initially when I had, I was like, holy shit, the finish was crazy. It was good. It was balanced. This one was shit. <laughs> it was mine. <laughs> dang it. <laughs> but the finish was nice. And Jeff, yeah, Jeff, you. God dang it. Jeff, Jeff got first place for me. All right. Jeffy. Crap. Chef and Jeff, Chef and Jeff, Chef and Jeff, it doesn't. I, <laughs> I, I like, I like that reveal. Crap. Yeah. Uh, yeah, guys. If you, uh, if you want to know really quick what uh, the the recipes were, there's Jeff's recipe right there. He went heavy on the Knob Creek with uh, 11, 11 milliliters. Then he had six milliliters of the Old Forester Rye. Then he had one and a half each of Jack Daniels. <laughs> And Evan Williams. So um, that was Jeff's plan. If you guys want to try this blends at home, try these blends. There you go. Hmm. And we'll post those up on our Patreon too as well. Jeff will post that sheet. So if you guys want to check it's it out. It's already up there. Yeah. So make sure you get it on there. And then uh, if Jay wants to post it, however he wants to do it. For his yeah, I'll post it. I'll post it on Patreon. Um, that'll be cool. I can't even lie. That's a good blend. Um <laughs> the, finishes are, the finishes are really similar between the two of ours, but I think yours maybe just gave a little bit more flavor. Um, All right. It swayed me that way. Okay. Kelsey? Are we good um, we'll, we'll end with Jason here. He can be the finale. The last place, I just, I don't know. I just didn't feel like I liked some of the spices in it, but it just didn't have, it was all mid palate. And finish there wasn't anything up front so okay. that one was uh jason's yeah it's that it's that finish Damn, you guys are killing me i know they're ganging up on you jason uh third place kind of a similar but it had too much nuttiness which had, means it had too much beam in it Oh, that's probably mine. <laughs> that, that, that's D's. That's Darrell's third place. Mine. No, oh, Darrell. Okay. okay. Wow. Second place. Yeah, palettes. I right? really felt like this was an even kill. It was really close between the top two glasses. 
Um, None of us picked our own. That was Jeffries. Oh, I should have picked his own. Cheater. And then I picked mine as first. Damn. Okay. All right. All right. Where are you at, Mr. Jason? So well, Jeff's not Jason, going for Jason's the finale here, so I'll I'll go next. Oh, here. okay, okay. So I had A as my last place here. This is the one that I said was kind of even keel throughout it. Like real good blend, good mouthfeel, but I it was just consistently good every step of the way. Uh didn't have a standout moment. So Steven, uh Steven Walt, it's one channel. All three guys are in one channel. It's hello again, whiskey friends. So you could you could check them out, Stephen Walt. My A is Jason's. Jason's, we're crapping on you. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sorry, the it's the Sorry the guys. Flavors are nice. The flavors are great, actually. Because I, I put it in there. I was like, it's balanced, but it's just the finish. That's the only thing I think is. You're not getting a finish on mine. I think I get a nice finish on mine. But, but it's not like the other two. Like Jeff's in. In mine, Steven, but the uh, well, I'll go through mine when we'll see. Well, I got to see what what I might I might be shitting on my own blend here soon. So we'll, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's uh, I, I don't know ahead, which Jeff. one's Kelsey's. That's what's driving me nuts. Actually, I I spent the most time trying to figure out which one was similar to it, and I still couldn't figure you it out. You said B was mine, right? So B is my third, and I think this one's the Durrell because the Jack Daniels does stand out to me, particularly percent. on the Come finish. On. Let's let's see. How much do you spend on bottles in a week or month, given that you receive some from distilleries and monetary YouTube? Uh, Alex, it's still too much money. I I couldn't even like quantify it. It's just it's Is a it lie. Yeah, I can't. It's Darrell. Yep. It? Jesus, that one extra percent you got you picked up. It might be that combination with the old Forester, but okay. well, the other thing too, you guys it's have to the finish. The other thing you gotta keep in mind is that we all had these in different orders in which we tasted them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're all going to have a different effect on the other. Yeah, that's that's actually mm -hmm. a good point. Yep. So the battle that I did the most, and you can always tell which battle you do the most because this is how much <laughs> is left in these glasses. Uh, I had to decide between D and C. D is my second place, so C is my winner. Uh, it ended up coming down to the finish that really distinguished C. So you probably got yourself the first. I don't know about that because there's a distinct nuttiness on this one. Um, maybe the Evan Williams could do that too. But I think the finish on C was better. So I put this one as my third for second place. This one's mine. For second. So you got Kelsey. Kelsey has a number one too. So oh I God, have Kelsey. Have Kelsey, you, you got my number one, actually. I, yeah, I told Kelsey. you you were hard on yourself all ago. Kelsey, <laughs> Kelsey you're, my you're, you're my boy, Blue. You're my boy, Blue. Yeah, so Kelsey got my number one, too. God dang it, Kelsey. Kick the butts. Wait, I had your number one. Yeah, Jeff was number one on yours, wasn't he? Oh. Oh, shit, yeah. You're right. See? Yeah. Well, already all right, Jason. Much, guys, got to fly out. This is it. This is it, Jason. You picked the winner, though. Now you've got it. You've got the finale. All oh, these well, I mean, there's, there's no way I'm winning because you guys fucking shit on my blend, all three of you. So <laughs> you wouldn't get your own points anyway. But yeah, yeah it was okay. Were. It was a it was a conspiracy. I see the fix is in. <laughs> <laughs> I love how I love how I love how my blend was so close to Kelsey's. Yeah, Kelsey had his first, and mine was last. <laughs> Amazing. Well, all right, we'll that see is how that better in mom later. Place. Actually, why? That's something actually interesting to break down later because yeah, yeah, yeah. now All that right. I say that, I want to compare those two even more. So my last place was letter A, and this one – Notes on that. This one didn't do anything for me. Good, good. This was the one that had the probably the best texture, I think, but didn't really have much on the front of the palette. has a nice sneaky finish, and this one is Kelsey's. <laughs> Oh, what? Holy yeah. crap. So there you go. So me and Kelsey make similar blends. He's got mine last, and I got his last, which is pretty hilarious. I think this goes to prove the point of what order we taste things in. Yeah, I yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 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 Could, but... All right. Third place was my letter C. This was the one. B and C for me were really close. 
C had a nice balance. Somewhat somewhat of a decent finish here, too. But I think I like the uh, the finish on letter B better. So third really had a had a kind of a I'm not gonna say a similar profile, but a similar balance to me, which I really liked. But B beat out three just based on the finish. And number three is Durrell's. Damn it. Which means Oh Damn my god. god. Yeah, I picked my own as my favorite. Sorry, guys. No, no. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff got second and I picked I picked mine as my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> that just goes to prove too that we like what we like too. For Jeff, I mean, I gotta say though, Jeff's um the more this is sitting in the glass, I think Jeff's is actually improving the most. It's getting I think it's got the most like punch of flavor. It's got a really great balance, it's got a nice sneaky long finish, and then Yeah, see, mine now, compared to Jeff's, I love the front of the palette and the mid palette on mine. Mine has like a sneaky finish on the back end, but I think Jeff's is also a little bit sweeter. It might be a little bit better balanced there. So that's what I'm That's what I'm going in with. Good job, Jeff. I I was Jeff, your favorite. I was everybody's favorites outside of their own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, won so something. Jeff, so let, me, let, me, let, me throw up, let me throw up Jeff's again. Um, so Evan Williams, 17. Oh, let me see. So knob Creek, he went heavy on the knob, uh, Creek nine year. So, so here was my thing, Jeff, cause I almost went that direction because I thought like knob Creek would have been like a good base, but I went on for Evan Williams as the base. And then I thought I, I would add some Oak with the knob Creek, add a little bit of spice with the old forester and then add some, um, a little bit of sweetness with the Jack Daniel. So that was, that was kind of my mindset. So I'm actually glad you did the knob Creek as the base. Cause I was wondering how that might play versus the Evan Williams as the base. See, I flip flopped them. I made one of each. So I made the exact proportions were the same, but I switched out knob Creek and <laughs> Evan Williams. Yeah. Yeah. How often I, do you do? How often do you do these blend things and do a drop the whiskey so we can blend at home? Um, this is our second one we've done, but I mean, I blend, I play around with blends all the time. I mean, it's just something if I'm bored, I just like to do just to kind of, and even in some videos, when I do double base videos, I'll take the two whiskeys or the triple base videos. I'll take all the three that I'm tasting and I'll blend them just to see what happens. Sometimes I get some really good ideas off of it. And sometimes they don't work at all. Just depends. Yeah. So one thing we're doing in a couple weeks, really, I guess Darrell, you're the one curating this if I if yes. I got it straight. But Darrell is actually going to blend four samples, give us all the components, and then tell us to guess which components were in which blend. Oh so that, god. But I'll yeah, give them fun. We did oh, wait a second, that. but you're gonna know the components? I'll we'll give know yeah, the it's gonna be a cheat. We'll sheet. know the components, one for like We'll know like what bottles are in each one, but this one's three components, this one's two, this one's four, and we'll have to arrange all the puzzle pieces and see how many we get right. Yeah. yeah. One thing to remember is that y'all are not Nancy. Well, that's for damn sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not her. Definitely not Nancy. But Nancy yeah. is, uh, you know, Nancy has a lot more fun whiskey to blend with than we do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she doesn't add Nan JD. So. <laughs> Nancy yeah. smacked down my blend during that blend again year. I still remember it where she was like, yes, she did. Nose, she... nose doesn't match the palette. This one's out of there. And I was like, ah! <laughs> yeah, she, uh, she, yeah, she, she was a little bit harsh. On you. <laughs> she was, I don't think it was harsh. I just think she was just being, you know, brutally honest. Like, nope, nope, this isn't, this doesn't work. That's yeah. How she, that's yeah. how she evaluates it. But you know, it's like, ah, but do you remember the year before when Fred Minnick was all like, this guy could get he could be hired to do like some blending for people. Did you do you remember that comment? Yeah, that, he gave you high yeah. Praise, bro. Yeah. So um, you went you went from so, first to worst pretty quick. <laughs> so, <laughs> based, <laughs> on, based off this experience, I've got momentum and I'm coming for you, Darrell. There you go. There you go. Yeah, use use this momentum, build on it. There you go. <laughs> 
Big Vic says more Ambirana. Yes, then we'll finish the winning blend in Ambirana. And we'll send it all to Big Vic. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Wait, who can? All right, guys. So let's get to the giveaways tonight. Um, so Ethan and Katie, uh, how do you – I don't know how you guys want to do this. If we're just going to do random um, – are we picking numbers? How do you want to do this, uh, Ethan and Katie? First to worst story, just like <laughs> – <laughs> Petition to add single barrels back to blend again. Yeah, no, it's not happening. I'm telling you though, JG's JG's little two two bourbon two uh a rye his burai blend is a kind of a winner. So Who's YouTube user, <laughs> YouTube user. Yeah, I don't know. Like, he gave me yeah. a, a stone cold. Yeah, hell yeah. Did he? <laughs> oh yeah. I guess. Oh yeah. Dang it, Jeff. Well, Jason didn't win, so I'm happy. A wheel. <laughs> wheel. 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 Oh yeah. Wheel. Let's, let's give us a wheel. We can do that. Uh best of the worst is still the worst. Says Steven Scone shall <laughs> <laughs> Oh wait, we have to find out who has to chug. Oh, uh, that's Jason. Jason. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, <laughs> obviously, obviously, you guys before we you came on, to, we all colluded, and yeah, before you guys came on to my show, we're like, listen, this is Jason's blend. No matter what the fuck you do, say it's last. <laughs> I know that's what happened, so it's fine. I fell. So while we're waiting for the wheel, should we see Jason's chug number seven? Is that what yeah, we're doing? this is this is uh, this was this was Jeff dreaming about this all yesterday. So you get nothing, you lose. Good day, sir. That's just that's that was Jeff was screaming at Jason all that. That's what he was dreaming about. <laughs> yeah, and Jeff feels like this right now. Excuse me. I'm carrying Frodo up the volcano. I'm good, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are Frodo. Oh my goodness gracious. Kenneth Rathburn, that's a good call. You better try the mixers first before you check the JD7. <laughs> yeah, that's a good that's a good call. Uh because then I'll just <laughs> Oh, you haven't even tried it yet. Yeah, because tonight, uh, with my blending skills, uh this happened. Ah, uh, I fell. <laughs> oh my god, that's still my favorite. Yeah, uh, just just fell on my ass. Just on my point ass. though. On point though. Those are all Elijah Craig bottles, and that will be part of the giveaway tonight. So, <laughs> yeah, Rudy, Rudy for the win. Rudy for the win. Just all right, let's talk a little bit about this Michter's uh, barrel strength because um, this thing so far on the on the nose this year is super super rich never gets old um rudy for the win it does jeff is shorter i think <laughs> <laughs> and rudy you're five hey. foot nothing you're five foot nothing a hundred and nothing you got hardly a speck of athletic ability <laughs> i am a solid five foot eight that i say is five foot nine it is fine <laughs> oh that's good that's good because i'm five foot seven i say a solid five foot eight <laughs> I think I, I could I could pull off five foot eight if I'm wearing the the right Jordans. <laughs> we're, we're the same height depending on the shoes you pick. Yeah, exactly. Once yeah. you stand next to Ethan, then you look like you're four foot two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I might as well just be a Chihuahua humping Ethan's leg at that point. Oh, there, Jesus! There was a stream recently where Ethan was uh, holding a Rebecca Creek bottle, which is like the weirdest shaped bottle, and somebody was like, "Is that a three seventy five? <laughs> Kenneth Ross. Oh it is some gosh. Yeah. The Haley's. Is that what Jay's wearing? You wearing the Haley's? <laughs> Do you remember those? Oh, yeah. Sliding around. <laughs> wow, this is such a super sweet rye, as usual with Mictors. Um, 
like heavy, heavy, heavy brown sugar. This is almost like borderline like burnt caramel a little bit. But it's also got like a marshmallow note, like a toasted marshmallow note, I think, from that from that super like heavy toast that they put on these barrels. I definitely pick up like a marshmallow, kind of a gingerbread note too. This is very s'moresy in the glass. I get a little chocolate, marshmallow, cinnamon graham cracker, heavy like burnt brown sugar. I feel like the mint is there for the rye, for like the rye side, but it's a little bit more muted on the back end because it's so sweet. So you don't get as much rye spice as I feel like I've gotten in the past with some of these. I don't know if it's just my, um, I mean, this is, you know, they do release at different proofs. Uh, but this one in particular, this is 24B0981. And this is a very, very heavily sweet barrel strength rye whiskey from Michter's. It's it's very s'moresy. So, uh, Jeff, aren't we the same height adding your hair, says Adam Shelton? Oh, nice. <laughs> I, I'm a solid six foot if you add the hair. Yeah, Jeez. you should just you should just grow that shit out. Go straight up, see what happens. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it turns curly and into a fro, which is totally interesting as well. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for. <laughs> hey, dude, you could bring back the mullet, Jeff. You could just oh, keep man. it business on top and and party in the back. You could do it. <laughs> All right, I think I I think I got a wheel for everybody. So give me uh give me one second here. All go. right. Thank you guys for uh, contributing to help Cheech. For everybody that contributed, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, wrote and thanks everybody so much for all the support that he's getting. So, absolutely. Okay, here is the wheel. Oh my God, there are so many names on this. It's amazing. <laughs> okay, let me uh, let me share this for everybody, and we'll do a little do a little uh, giveaway action. Uh, yeah, we'll do a little giveaway action. Okay. Can you guys see the wheel right now? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. The names have been hidden to protect the innocent. <laughs> Eyeball. All right. So first and foremost, this is for Joe Wanninger's Disco 1 through 11 sample pack. That's pretty cool. Are you ready? Thank you, Joe. Appreciate Here that. Here we yeah. go. And spin it to win it. It's not making any noise. I don't even see the pointer. Who won? Andrew Penza. Congratulations. Way to go. Congrats. That's a, that's a killer flight, by the way. Yeah, that's a killer flight right there. Uh, let me write this in here. <laughs> Cheech, Cheech just called the picture of the wheel the eclipse. Pretty accurate, <laughs> Pretty accurate Cheech. That is no moon. I'll say that. Um, Get moon all right. So I'm going to remove I'm gonna remove all of Andrew Penza because he's uh, he won. Um Andrew Penza, please email me at themashandrum at gmail.com to claim your prize. Uh, we'll get that sent out to you. Um, all right. Next up is Kelsey's 12 Stags of Christmas. Here we go. <laughs> See, Jeff, uh, you doesn't have to randomize. It's still random. Yep. No, Tyler Sherrod. <laughs> Congrats, Tyler. All right, Tyler. Congrats, man. That's, Alex uh, Rod, congrats. You get the 12 stags. Uh, Kelsey, where could he reach you? Uh, just email me at kelsey.dime at gmail.com. Send me your information. I'll make sure that those get out to you. Kelsey.dime at gmail.com. There you go. All right, next up is Jeffrey Wax, 100 Elijah Craig Barrel Proof Sample. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no. Sorry, let, it's it's, it's going to be around 20, not 100. Sorry, guys. Well, 20. All right, here we go. 20. But this pirate bottle will be in there. The pirate bottle will be in there. Here we go. Spin it to win it. It's like the best bottle he has. <laughs> Jeremy Scott, congratulations. Ooh. Oh, I think that's great, Scott. I think I know where to find him. Uh, Jeremy, confirm that with me. Uh, hello again, whiskey friends at gmail.com. All right. There you go. Remove all entries. Here we go. Next one up is Durrell. Durrell, this is for the Elijah Quick Barrel Proof. Can you remind everybody what batch it is? This one is A122, and we'll have another bottle right after that. All right. For the ECBP A122, this goes to oh. Jason Wickle. Jason Wickle. Cheers, Jason. Let me write that down. And Jason, message me at 
to actually i'm going to put it in chat because i'll spell my name and it's going to get spelled incorrectly <laughs> all right so Darrell's going to drop that in the chat um that is let's me. go just, to yeah. now now it's for the copper and cask pick correct yes all right let's spin it for the copper and cask pick and we have dun 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 Mark, oh, Mark B. Yeah, I know what it's been. Mark B. <laughs> it, it's not a stream if Mark doesn't win. <laughs> exactly. Is he is he pretty lucky all the time? Oh my yeah. gosh, dude! Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> Except one day he changed his name to like Mark Lucky or something, and that was the one night he didn't win anything. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's you can't mess with fate. You got to keep it right. All right. Uh, next one up is for my Peerless Rye pick. So uh, we're going to do this is for the newest Peerless Rye, the Loch Ness Rye, because it was lost at sea somewhere. Um, here we go. This one goes to dun, 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 John Trombetta. Ooh, John T. Hey, John T. Cheers. I think, I think, I think John has emailed before. John, uh, yeah, just shoot me a message either on um, uh, the master drum at gmail.com. Or Patreon. I think you might be a patron. I can't remember. All right. Uh, this next one is for the first of my 10 sample M&J sample pack. Here we go. It's going to be a killer pack. Killer, killer pack. And John Cloud. Ooh. Cheers, John. Congrats, John. Hey, cheers, Congrats, John. Congrats, John. Excuse me. And the last giveaway of the night, a second 10-pack of Master and Journey uh, delicious barrel picks. And here we go. Last but not least goes to Jeffrey Stakowski. Stakowski. Dude, he's Hi. lucky, too. He's lucky. He uh, he won, uh, I think, a ball or two in the blend again thing. So He's got a uh, killer first name, too. <laughs> <laughs> of course he does all right guys so uh, let's see andrew penza tyler sherrod jeremy scott uh jason wickle mark b john trombetta john cloud and jeffrey uh jeffrey stokowski congratulations um if you don't have any of the emails that were just mentioned or you see in the chat just feel free to email me at uh the at gmail.com and uh yeah Holy crap! That was awesome. Congrats, Congrats everybody. everybody, and thanks for uh, for raising uh, some money for Mister uh, Cheech from Whiskey Encore. What is the what's the what's the total? What are we up to here for uh, for him? Let me let me click in the uh, the GoFundMe and see where we're at. So far, we've raised six thousand four hundred and fifty one dollars for Cheech. Awesome! That's awesome, guys. Thank you so much. Um, and with that said, I do want to uh, thank again, uh, say thanks again to Hello Again Whiskey friends, Jeff, Kelsey, and Darrell for, uh, for teaming up and taking me out tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks so much for uh, coming up with another great blending idea, and I can't wait to do this again so um, I can redeem myself and you guys can gang off on me again. I appreciate it. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i love you guys hey safe travels tomorrow for those of you guys traveling to go to uh Denny and have a have a blast at backbone guys we'll be back next week right here with some new bottles probably uh, a blind tasting and a couple of other uh, fun things that i have in mind so uh stay tuned for that and uh with that said like i always say it's not about the whiskey it's the people you share with cheers to jeff to kelsey to Darrell to Cheech, to all the winners tonight, and to all you beautiful pe people watching. Cheers. See you next week, guys. Cheers, guys.